Welcome back to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross, and today we are continuing our the All Fighters Challenge. Let me do that one more time, just for YouTube. <laughs> Stumbling over my words. Uh, okay. Right? Yep. <laughs> I was like, I got the right party, right? I do. I think I do. Welcome back to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross, and today we're continuing the All Fighters Challenge in Pool of Radiance. I think the last thing we did was the Textile House. Still have the Graveyard, the Kobolds, uh, Zento Keep, the Temple of Bane, all sorts of fun stuff. The most difficult quests for all fighters. Uh, our fighters are Ali, uh, Human, Lawful Good, Tyson, Dwarf, Lawful Good, Holy Field, uh, Elf, Lawful Good, Silva, Half Elf, Lawful Good, St. Pierre, after Georges St. Pierre, I think, Halfling, Lawful Good, and Rhonda, Gnome, Lawful Good, Rhonda Rousey. Everyone use it for weapons. Longsword plus four, which we got at the Buccaneer camp, I believe. Tyson is using two and sword plus one, plus three versus undead. Use this one. Good thing I checked that. There are undead in the textile house, which is why he had it. He had it. Birdman4793, good morning. Uh, the throat's doing pretty poorly, so we're going to go for as long as we can before I tap out. Holy Fields got the gauntlets of Ogre Power. Wait, what's the weapon? Mace plus two. Cool. Silva. Broadsword plus one. We got a better weapon for you, don't we? Longsword plus one. Oh, you know what? I decided that Broadsword plus one is better than Longsword plus one. Well, St. Pierre could use some more arrows. Everybody could use more arrows. St. Pierre is our... Yeah, we need more arrows. Yes. Bye. Today's going to be rough. For two reasons. One, I throw it's all messed up. And two, we, uh, we're doing the most difficult, um, quest for all fighters today. We're going to get shot to crap with arrows. Um, so which one do we want to fail at first? Leo, how's, what's going on? How are you doing? They throw some dirt on it, but eating dirt would be a no. Throw some dirt on your throat. Shake it off. Walk it off. It says here's a Might Magic 2 in the category. Really? It shouldn't. How about now? Does it still say Heroes 2? <clears throat> Should say Advanced Now Fix. Oh, wow, that's freaking weird. Okay. Okay. Well, my apologies then. <laughs> someday. Someday we are definitely going to do an all-day Heroes of Might Magic 2 stream. <clears throat> I think which one should we do first? Let's do Zental Key first. I'm going the wrong way for Zental Keep. Ow! It 
To the north is the passenger dock. Norman Chell 17 says, you ever going to make the leap to the Heroes of Might Magic 3? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests to play 3 and 5. But we have so much left to explore in Heroes 2. Plus, it's my favorite game. <laughs> Surprise my group of Sturges. Great. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. I want it to be I wanted to be surprised by Sturges. Armor class eight. I swear to god, if anybody misses them when they go to make an attack, they're off the team. <laughs> We're gonna drop them. Like a bad habit or a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Leo says, even though here's my magic, this sucks. Not with that weapon. Well, why would we swing at them with a short bow? That's just crazy. You're off the team. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Heroes of Might and Magic 2, it's just the one we all fell in love with. It's just the one that we played a thousand hours, you know? And I, uh, fun fact about Heroes of Might and Magic, um, Heroes of Might and Magic and Heroes of Might and Magic 2 were released in the same year. Isn't that nuts? St. Pierre, you suck. Silva. Wow, six damage. Ow, ow. Rhonda. Well, Rhonda doesn't have a magical weapon. Still gets the job done. Here's my magic too is what the one should have been. Pretty much. I read a little article about it. There's not a lot of information coming from the developers. But they had this... They they kind of... Um, they developed one, and it was really successful. Um, and people wanted more of it. And the developers said, uh, no, we have the engine, let's just... let's just make another game. And Heroes 2 came out the same year. They, it was really a fast production. There we go, St. Pierre. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's pretty much the same game, just, um, the different artwork, <laughs> two new alignments. Art of 2 is so much better. It is. I like the art of Heroes 2 better than 3. 3 has this weird, like, uh... Should we do the Ankeg fight? Let's do the Ankeg fight. Oh, those things are scary looking. Imagine seeing a giant insect like that. You messed up. <laughs> you really messed up. Poor half like a gnome are weighed down by all their arrows. Silva's also pretty bogged down. Miss me. There we go. But to answer your question, yes, absolutely. We're going to play Heroes of Might Magic 3 on this channel. Absolutely. And five. Maybe four, too. I've never played uh, anything more recent than Heroes 3.
That was easy enough. We get, I think we get gems for this. No, we don't get anything. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. A group of men on horseback ride out to meet you. Their leader says, are you the diplomatic envoys from New Flan? What will you say? Oui. Si. They're being escorted into Zental Outpost. From here, you see a large inner wall around the central keep. This area is busy with men entering and leaving barracks. You're led toward the central keep. You're inside the Commandant's office. He greets you and you hand him the papers. After skimming through the papers, the Commandant says, I welcome you and hope you will join me for dinner tonight. He tells you a guard to give you a tour of the outpost. The guard giving the tour says, Here you see one of our fine barracks. There are six of these here and each can hold over a hundred men. So you're saying there are six hundred of you. We can take them. Here you see one of our fine watchtowers, which were built by the finest stonemasons in the land. Fine. So he's saying fine a lot. From here, you can also see our fine, solidly built, fine outside, fine wall. This fine wall has fine survived many fine attacks, including fine one from a fine dragon. Art says, that concludes the tour. I will show you to your quarters. Here are your quarters. Do not leave this area. He then leaves. How come you can leave? Sick son of a bitch. At dusk, a guard comes by to escort you to dinner. You arrive at the officer's mess and are seated with the commandant and his advisors. A fine meal of roast boar is served with a hearty red wine. Commandant turns to one of the characters and says, So how is everything in Flan? What will you talk about? The city. Well, let's talk about old Flan. I know a legend about a fire being called Tyrant Tychus. I believe that Tyrant Tychus and Tyrant Thraxus are one and the same. New Flan having any trouble with Tyrant Thraxus? Trouble. I expect there would be trouble. I've heard Tyrant Thraxus is a powerful fire demon. Your city's defenses must be quite strong. How strong are they? Strong! Sounds like your city can handle that fire demon Tyrant Thraxus. Let's talk about magic. Birdman4793 is asking me if I put any more thought into Baldur's Gate games. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to stream Baldur's Gate. One thing at a time, though. Um, Norman 17 question. Did you get this all fighter party into the library? I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> Good question. Uh, Leo says the first Heroes game says he says it feels off. The elf is taller than the dragon. A lot of crappy 3D in it. They're all gigantic compared to the castle. Yeah, that is true, isn't it? Still a fun game. Magic. One of the Commandant's advisors asks you if you've heard of any unique magical items or places. Mention the Pool of Radiance. Uh, as you mentioned, the Pool of Radiance, Commandant tells you a story about that very pool. You enjoyed the story and copied into your journal under Entry 46. I'm not going to read any journal entries today. Uh, trying to rest the throat. Um, plus, if you want to hear me read the journal entries, I have a, a walkthrough on YouTube of this game where I read all the journal entries. You should check it out. Let's talk about politics. The Flowers Town Council is corrupt, specifically Ulrich Eberhardt. Is this true? Um, what happens if you say yes? You say that Ulrich Eberhard is corrupt, and he responds by saying, I'd advise you to be careful when dealing with the town council. All right. Pretty uneventful. Is he still going to try and kill us? Sleep with the watch. Four armed guards burst in and attack you. Oh, that was ill-advised of them. Uh, Nowhere Man 1217. I don't think I was able to get into the uh, library. After this, we're gonna we're gonna try. So we go back to the town hall. If they say that maps, tomes, information about Flan, etc., is still a quest, then that'll answer our question. I don't think I did. Defeat the guard, some more men running in and attack. 
know, I always wonder who, who those first four guards actually were. Why did they send them in? By themselves. Guards posted outside your door, baby. I don't know. Let's switch over to the short bow plus one. Where are you going? Where are you going? I woke up this morning, I put on a random Twitch channel. Not random, it was actually sponsored. I wanted to see how well sponsoring um, sponsored Twitch, I mean, sponsored by Twitch. Sponsored uh, streams do. Guy was playing, guy was streaming with 29 viewers. I was the 29th. Curious about paying Twitch to push your stream like that. A lot of regular streamers don't like it. People who didn't need Twitch to push them when Twitch first launched. When was it, 2011? Was it 2011? Uh, when the first Twitch streamers were people who had followings already. Teams that had followings already. Uh, Esports teams, I mean. And they all think streamers paying Twitch to promote their stuff is a bad idea for various reasons. I think it's a okay idea. I just wanted to check it out. Norman1217 says, yeah, you need that knock spell, I think, to get in, and I'm not sure how you get past that without a magic user. No real way to buy that service, and the only wizard NPC I can think of joins your party is a dude in the graveyard, but he tries to kill you even if you let him join. I think that that was my plan. Have the guy join us, then try and leave the graveyard. I don't know if he leaves the party if you leave the graveyard, but have him learn knock. If he even knows the spell. He might not know the spell. I have never let that guy join my party, ever. <laughs> He's got such nice stuff. Why would you let him... Keep it. Just kill him and take it. <laughs> like a lawful good party. Alarm goes off in the distance. Fan freaking tastic. So we're gonna wander around until we find that dwarf leader. We have to fight like seventeen thousand groups of people. Yeah, I think if you leave the graveyard he attacks. No 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 no. Should be able to sweep these guys. Not the corporals, the uh the guards. I wish you could. Oh, we can sweep. That's brilliant. Shoot him. I can't solve the sweep. Can you not sweep with a mace? You have to sweep with swords? How do you fit a hundred men in these? Lots of confusion. Not very well trained, huh? The dopes. Oh, there's a lot of them. Are they all guards? If they are, I'm gonna kill them all. I can sleep with a flail. Silva has a broadsword plus one. Maybe I was up against the creatures I couldn't actually sweep. Possible I was next to a corporal and not a guard. I 
I mean, you should be able to sweep. If you're a fighter, you should be able to sweep with any weapon. That's what fighters do. They use every weapon. In second edition, pretty sure fighters can be proficient with anything. Whereas clerics can only be proficient in blunt weapons, like maces and flails. And that's basically it. <laughs> There's no other cleric weapon but a mace or a flare or a hammer, like a warhammer or something. Uh, these are corporals here. A fighter should be able to use anything. Holy field. Oh, you can try to run. Ugh. And I guess be successful. Come back here, you bastard. Got him. <laughs> 15 damage. That's for a longsword, man. Nothing here is magical. Oops. They <laughs> go full Donatello and have a cleric with a bow staff. Yeah, I could. I was thinking about it. I I almost always used to say, not not going to anymore. Used to always say, doing pool of radiance with nothing but magic users is impossible because, literally impossible because Tyrant Thraxis is immune to magic, and they only give you one magic item for a magic user a plus one quarter staff actually not true I forgot there are plenty of magical daggers in the game so I'm saying there's a chance it would be really difficult though uh miss me yes Damn it. There we go, silver sweeping now. Kicking the crap out of these guys. You got a plus two quarter staff? I found a plus two quarter staff once in a playthrough. There are some random magic items. I was talking about that with, um, when we were streaming Summoner. How I wish that there were like a table of random magic items. Not everything you get in that game is worth getting. Uh, sure. No, 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 I keep doing that. If I wasn't able to sweep these guys, I'd be really upset. Not that I'm particularly happy to be <laughs> wading through sea of weenies. I do has one hit point left. Yeah, there are a few plus one daggers, plus one quarter staff that are hard-coded into the game. There are um, many points in the game where there are set 
treasure. I set loot. Same loot at the end of a fight. Like, for instance, when we fight that dwarvish fighter, he's going to have gauntlets of ogre power. And I think the Commandant has a plus... No, I'm misremembering. I think they're using plus two longswords. You don't get a plus five longsword until you defeat the false tyrant Thraxus. dude on the throne who's like, I'm Tyrant Thraxus, bow to me. And you kick his blood hole into his throat. And you get a plus five luxury. Rhonda! Come on! Pretty sure we've done the kobolds of the lizard men. Yeah, there are magic daggers in the Temple of Bane. Bane! I like how all the corporals are in the back. You know, like a leader would be. <laughs> Oh, you're running away? You were just getting to know one another. We were having so much fun. Dang it. How dare you. Longbow. Ain't no shortbow crap happening here. Hi -ya! Do 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 smash your face. You miss me. Die. Ah. Uh. Unequip! Unequip! He doesn't have a bow. What the shit heckin' crap is that? You have a bow, right? Yeah. You do. This corporal will not escape us. Swear it. Okay. <laughs> I tried to equip two shields right there. No lie. Uh, I was playing D&D &D with um, my friends from New York, and uh, I was playing a half-orc paladin who couldn't hit a damn thing. I just kept missing. It rolled so poorly. We were playing virtual and rolled 22, so it was an automatic roller. So it wasn't like I was rolling cursed dice or something like that. Um, but my character was the was the heavy in the party. He was the uh, the meat shield, as it were. So my guy was always in the front line trying to fight, but he would just miss everything while everyone else who was like a spellcaster of some kind or had some crazy ranged attack would deal all the damage to their enemies. 
When I mean all the damage, I mean all the damage. I remember hitting something maybe three times. And this was the case of chaos. It was a very combat heavy uh, campaign. Um, everyone's gonna sweep. So, uh, on many occasions, my guy would be almost going down. Because, you know, he's the only one up front taking damage. So I took the dodge action a lot. I'd be on the front lines, I'd be containing stuff, so I was doing my job. But I'd be so low on hit points. I'd be out of cure wound spells or um, lay on hands. We're taking the dodge action, and I joked once. I, w I was actually kind of serious. Because I asked the DM if I could do this. And I was like, can I? Like, I should equip two shields. <laughs> and just take the dodge action. Just on my turn, just every time. Just run to the front with two shields, cast Shield of Faith, and dodge. So like everybody concentrates on me, and I'm just deflecting things with my two shields. He, did, he never said no, and I had this vision of a paladin with like a huge two-handed sword, like just huge great sword, like kicking down doors and smiting evil. And the party was like, "You should really have a shield." <laughs> so they all kind of like pushed me into. In the case of chaos, there are lots of mundane weapons. They're like, you should take one of these long swords and that shield. I'm like, fine. The DM was kind of annoyed with my character. Um, There's a lot to, take, to keep track of uh, for him. Because sometimes I would have a shield, sometimes I wouldn't. And I'd have to remind him what my armor class was. Because um, without a shield, I think it was... 18. Wait, hold on. Not a shield, I think it was 17. I don't remember. This is 5th edition rules, by the way, not 2nd edition. Crap. You're not gonna get away. Um, so I remember it was something like 17. No, 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 no. I keep hitting the wrong buttons. when I didn't have a shield on. And with a shield, it was something like 19. And then with shield of faith, it was 21. But any given point, my armor class could have been 17, 19, or 21. He'd be like, a 19, that hits. I'm like, no, I got shield of faith on. It misses. And he'd be like, okay, great. But like constantly. And I, I kept trying to update it on my token. But when you're running stuff as a DM, you, you don't always have the token information in handy. You gotta click on the token to get it. And that's just annoying. Okay, where is this confounded dwarf? Yeah! What's up, buddy? Are you sleeping? How much crap are we up against? Wow, it's a lot of crap. Are they all guards, though? They might all be guards. Nope. They're not all guards. Um, Bean Boy VP, what's going on? How are you? Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat, everybody. Thank you all for uh, joining me. Appreciate the support. You're fighting a double ear infection. Oh no, that's terrible. Sorry to hear that. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> that sucks, dude. We're gonna sit here for a while while the arrows fly. Hey, it's our turn. 
Oh yeah, it goes down and is dying. One of my own playthroughs of this game. The dwarf fighter fled and got away. And I was so upset that I was missing out on the gauntlets of ogre power that I started the whole quest over again. <laughs> like, no, he can't get away. All the guards have one quarrel in their inventory, so they have a light crossbow, they shoot the quarrel, and they, they drop the crossbow and pull out a sword. But it looks like they're actually shooting more than one thing. Alright, yeah, so they shoot once and they're they're done. That's something first level creatures do when I'm the DM. Carry light cross where they fire it, then they throw it on the ground, pull out a weapon. And I obviously got the idea from this. made me think of this but Dungeon of the Mad Mage we found this really cool looking contraption and I forget how the DM described it but we spent like 20 minutes as players casting detect magic and trying to figure out what's going on and making like history and arcana checks and then we run into an NPC right after who's friendly to us and we asked them about oh no sorry we didn't run to an NPC who was friendly I think we charmed a hobgoblin <laughs> is what happened or we cast some sort of like zone of truth or I forget exactly what's what, what, what we did but we asked him about that puzzle that contraption and he goes what that thing that's our clock it tells us when it's daytime or nighttime and we were like, oh. A real fun of a paladin smiting the Christ out of things. Well, you smite the Christ into things, wouldn't you? 5e paladins are one of the biggest burst damage dealers in the game. Yeah, my paladin was a was a shithead. Couldn't do anything. They can deal a lot of damage. It's true. You also notice I'm streaming today without any music in the background. Um, that's partly because the music I play is shite. The license free stuff. The other reason is the first video I put on YouTube of the, uh, you know what? Let's start sweeping. Uh, of the All Fighters Challenge. Nice. YouTube flagged it for copyright infringement. Hooray! The lesson learned. Just because 
uh, title says license-free music on it, royalty-free, doesn't mean it actually is. Try to smite in through the mouth and out the bee hole. <laughs> no, I mean, YouTube's doing its job. Actually, it makes me feel good that uh, YouTube looks out for people in that way. I'm, I'm definitely on musicians and composers' sides forever when it comes to using their work. I mean, I was in a band that was part of a class action lawsuit against Spotify. Because, I mean, it's streaming someone's music or using it without a license is stealing. <laughs> You're stealing from them. And stealing is illegal. Man. It's damn hard enough trying to make money as a professional musician. And I think I would know because I was one for a few years. And it was freaking hard. And it was, it's almost impossible to make money as a musician. As an original composer or musician, yeah, who plays original music, it's, it's pretty much impossible. 100% of the musicians I knew well while I was a player. Whoops, 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 whoops. If they had, if they were making a living as a musician, they were in either a tribute band or a wedding band playing covers. <laughs> and to find a decent gig like that, I can actually support you. It takes, you know, years of networking and work. I remember people used to tell me, like, Ross, you should do session gigs. Just do session work. You'll be fine. It's like, dude, it's not like you freaking sign up for that stuff. You get studio gigs by knowing somebody who needs you to play on their record. And you only get that through connections, you know, getting out there and playing and meeting people. It's the only way to ever get gigs. That shit is expensive. Let me tell you, being a musician, playing a show is expensive. When I was living in New York, I had a car. I owned a car. So I played I played the drums. Whenever a gig needed me to bring equipment, I was driving the equipment to the place. There are ways to take public transportation and have um, your bait, your essentials, like cart them around. But I wasn't about that life. So part of it is on me. The other part is I don't think I ever got paid to play a show in New York ever in my life. Ever, ever, ever. It's pay to play in New York City. For every band. Whether you play covers or not. It's pay to play. You have to bring a minimum of 20 people to the place. And then on the 21st person, you get like a dollar. And there's a cover fee of like 10 or 15 bucks. People ask you when you when you go to a venue, they're like, who who are you here to see? And they keep tallies of how many people. So dumb. So dumb. And if you weren't playing show there that evening, there'd be nobody in the bar. Hey man, if we weren't here, your your business would be empty. Give us all the money. I know when I was playing in Boston, 
things are a little better, but still not great. You still had pay to play in most cases, but there were still music venues that said, we're going to pay you X amount of money for you to come and play. And I would take that every time over some percentage of the door or the bar revenue, because you don't have any way to track that. Unless you hired somebody to watch the bar and keep track of how many people came in and who bought what, and that's just exhausting, and that costs you money. So you're at the whim of the club. Give me the guarantee every time. Every time, every time, every time. I mean, I'm pretty. I'm kind of ranting because I'm not exactly paying attention to what I'm saying. Because I'm also playing this game. Oh, they're running away. It'll take me forever to chase them down. Oh, you son of a bitch! My point is. Pay for music, please. <laughs> Somebody worked really hard on that, and they're relying on you to buy it rather than steal it. They need to know the right peeps, yeah. To get any gig. Game Boy VP that says, the only place that paid part-time dog was when I got shoes at the Spotlight in Beverly. It wasn't because I knew the bartender. Oh, shows, okay. <laughs> it wasn't because I knew the bartender, that money would just go towards paying for the jam room we had. You know, that's a good gig. A, a gig that sustains the band like that is a good one. The best paying gig Blackwater Noise ever had was the Bangkok Paradise. That wasn't so much funding the band as it was um, keeping our chops up and honest. And then Spotlight Closed. Okay, see? So this is the thing. Venues close all the time. And they open almost none of the time. <laughs> when was the last time you heard of a uh, music venue opening? And I'm not talking about a bar that has... Um, stage. Or not a stage. A bar that allows music. I'm talking about a music venue. A place specifically designed for live music. 1899, 1800... Holy Field already has gloves. Silva's gonna take them. Silva could use these. Silva's strength is only 17. Well, St. Pierre's is only 16. Oh, 17. Ronda's is 15. Ronda mostly uses. Let's give him the Ronda. <laughs> That's scary. A gnome with ogre strength. Whoops, where'd they go? Overloaded? Are you kidding me? Trade Rhonda. Rhonda, where are the gloves? Stronger, 1800, baby. Now you can take the arrows. Large group of men led by the Commandant rush forward and attack. 
Oh yeah, the frickin' spellcaster. You know what? Silva's gonna use the bow. Oops, uh use. Longbow. I'm not got a hundred hit points, his AC is negative three. I think I wanna prioritize killing the uh Spellcaster first. Alright, so that was successful. We're gonna miss be missing the commandant a lot. Rhonda! You what? We needed that jab of the lightning. We didn't really. Yeah, the place is that opener for National Axe, right. Major cities need more clubs like Church of Boston or um, maybe Terminal 5, New York. And fewer, fewer places like... Uh, Oh, the, more places like the Middle East. But even the Middle East isn't... Perfect, you know? It's like a restaurant and then... A couple of venues. Upstairs, downstairs. Music being the main attraction. Somebody's saying, let's go here. To this place because we want to find new music. Oh, we're swinging at him now. The demand for local music is frighteningly low. The reason why those places aren't popping up is because they're bad business ventures. Which is a darn shame. Anyway. I don't really have a point to make, I guess. I'm just... Complaining. I sure do miss Fireball. Gotta get the Necklace of Missiles. Don't actually remember where we get it. The Necklace of Missiles, I mean. St. Pierre, you're hurt. You don't have any potions, so... You're shit out of luck, my friend. I'm sorry. Uh, Rhonda's in decent shape. You know what? This is a good time to use a... Uh, a wand of paralyzation. Wrong class! It's a wand! I can use the wand of magic missiles, though. Good time for that, too, I guess. Ow! <laughs> Me and my VP's talking about the music scene in Nashville. I've never been to Nashville, believe it or not, but yes, it has a crazy good local music scene. Um, Maybe think of all the other artists in that area that weren't getting gigs. Yeah. I felt the same way about... Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas has a pretty healthy live music scene. Uh, 
um, the first time I went to Austin, uh, my wife, who went to school in Texas, was like, I have to show you 6th Street, because that's where all, that's the main strip. But, and we, we went for like an hour, and I was like, okay, can we find the place with like a local band? And we didn't have to go far. We just walked like a few blocks off 6th Street, and we found a bar that was packed with people, standing room only, watching a band. Everybody was standing watching, facing a band. And I was like, this is preferable to really a lot of other situations. The band was pretty good. I had a good time. Ouch, ouch. Holy feels going down. Holy feels gonna use a potion. Uh, another good town for music. Um, I've heard, I've never been. The only city in Tennessee I've ever been to is Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg sucks. <laughs> Apologies if you're from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um, kind of touristy. It's in like Smoky Mountain National Park and everything. Uh, and there's a music festival in Gatlinburg. Which is why I've been there. But my friend Gracie moved to Memphis specifically for the music scene. That's all she does. Professional musician. Gracie Curran and the Highfalutin Band. Check them out. Gracie decided one day she wanted to become a blues singer. And now she is. As somebody who put the right kind of energy out into the universe to make something happen. To will it into being. Don't have a potion of extra healing. I was a little surprised about the music scene in New Orleans, Louisiana. All the bars that had live music, were, they were all playing covers. And when I, I asked a, a band that was a really good band, they, uh, they played a Jaco Pistoria song, a uh, tune. And, uh, I tipped them, and I was like, uh, you guys got any, like, original music? They made fun of me. They're, they didn't even, they didn't look me in the eye or anything. They were like, hey, this guy wants to hear an original. I was like, alright, well, fuck you, and I left. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Bunch of jaded a-hole musicians. And she got a wand of magic missiles, too. Why don't you use it? Oh, he's got one hit point, come on. I went to Preservation Jazz Hall, which is a very touristy area. Historical building. But in the band that night was Lucian Barber, one of my favorite trombone players. And they had him sing a Satchmo song, which was pretty funny. Um, but afterwards, I got to meet him. That was super cool. He's a really nice dude. He's funny. He's a hot shit. Kind of, uh, kind of funny. He's a really damn good trombone player. One of my favorites. Well, like I was, we were sitting on the floor because there are no seats um, in Preservation Jazz Hall, and they were they just invited everybody to um, come on, hit them, sit on the floor, and the band is out in the hallway waiting to come on. 
I'm looking, I'm like, that guy looks like Lucian Barber. All right, we got the commandant. And he comes walking in. I'm like, that's fucking Lucian Barber. I turned to my wife. I was like, it's fucking Lucian Barber. And she's like, who the hell is that? <laughs> Good times. Got to meet him. We like flagged him down after. I'm not into autographs, so I didn't ask him for one. But I shook his hand and talked for maybe like four or five minutes. And, you know, Preservation Jazz Hall for him is just like a it's like a side gig, you know? Probably pays a decent amount of money. Because the tickets to get in were not cheap. Um, and he told me he was playing... Uh, not that night. But he said he was, he was playing a different hall, a different venue, the next night. Don't remember what it was. I don't remember what venue it was. Anyway, Solution Barber. Actually, the first time I ever heard Lucian Barber, I saw on uh, TV. Um, Ellis Marsalis' retirement concert. Uh, Lucian and... Um, what is his name? Henry Connick Jr. Did... Um, just the two of them. Is Harry Connick holding a mic with his left hand on the piano. And Lucian Barber on a trombone. They did uh, St. James Infirmary. I was just like, this guy's a really good trombone player. Beautiful tone. He's really the first... Really the first trombone player I, um... Got into. It was before him, the, uh... The only trombone player... I knew was, like, was Glenn Miller. <laughs> and I always looked at a trombone as, like, a... I was taught when you play big band jazz to set your kit up, make sure your chair is lined up with the trombones and not the not the reed instruments and not the saxophones. Because traditionally, drums line up against against the uh, next to the front row. But if you have room on the band bandstand, I was taught by my coach and I've heard a couple other players say that they line up with the trombones because they play all the most important uh, accents in the arrangement but I always looked at trombone as like a uh, an arrangement an orchestral instrument obviously I've heard trombone players solo but when you want a jazz solo you think of a trumpet right or a, or a saxophone don't really think of a trombone as like a glorified instrument in that way. Similar to how in rock music, you don't think of bass guitar, electric bass guitar being glorified instrument. It's part of an arrangement. It's part of an, it's an orchestral instrument. It's like if you don't, if you don't have trombone, is it jazz? If you don't have electric bass, is it rock or funk? not. It's such an essential part to the core of it. But hearing Lucian Barber, and I was like, wow, trombone is a beautiful instrument. And then I... And then, and only then did I start hearing about, like, trombone shorty and um, a few other virtu virtuistic virtu virtuoso trombone players. Even trombone shorty, he plays trombone and trumpet. <laughs> so even he's like, sometimes you got to solo on a trumpet. All 
All right, someone's going down here. Uh, it's not going to be Rhonda. St. Pierre's still holding out. That was a successful round of attacks. But, alright, I guess the point of that rambling was, if you want to learn more about Lucian Marvin, I would start there. Just go on YouTube and search for Harry Connick Jr. doing uh, St. James Infirmary for Ellis Marsalis. That whole concert is pretty cool. All of Ellis's uh, children play. Not all of them. All the ones who are musicians do. Not all of Ellis's kids are musicians. Got Jason, who's a drummer. Uh, Branford on sax. Of course, Winton on trumpet. And Delfeo on trumpet. B-Boy VP's talking about uh, Kamasi Washington had a nasty trombone player. Nice. Trombone can be a beautiful instrument. When I was in high school in the in the jazz band, um, the band director spent a lot of time with the trombones. He picked a lot of arrangements. Ugh. And granted, these are high school arrangements. He said they were college level, but they weren't. I've never seen a college chart write out a groove for a bossa nova on drums. With like a, a rock beat underneath it and not a bossa nova. <laughs> uh, but anyway, spent a lot of time with the trombones, um, making sure that they were. I move over here. Am I out of line of sight of most people? They were intoning the right tone because the arrangements he picked, they were playing the chord over or under which trump trumpets and saxophones were playing. But they were high school players. Granted, they were good high school players. They're still high school players. They didn't have a perfect trombone sound. Sometimes, I don't want to offend anybody. Not like any of my uh, high school jazz band friends will ever watch this, but... Sometimes it sounded like... A train's horn. Right, so I aimed at the corporal and not the aide because I, I thought I could take him out. Longbows do 1d8 damage and we get two shots with them per round. I think. There's a chance that we can take out a corporal in one turn with a longbow. I actually don't own Rise of the Phoenix, so I, I haven't heard heard that tune. I should check it out though. Is a feature of trombone? No, it's called Flutes and Trombone, so HSD. Can you guys just start like surrendering? I I am done with this. I'm done with this quest. Having fun talking about music, though. I'm a drummer. Let's talk about drummers. Music. My favorite drummers. Well, 
I like to, uh, I would like to say I could list my 10 favorite drummers and none of them sound alike to one another, but they kind of do. I have a type. I got a type. What are drums? <laughs> Mean Boy VP is also a drummer. Ow. Jerkwad. Okay, great. They're surrendering. We did it. Yeah. No Miss Rage. I don't know if you can do a top 10 off your dome. After killing the Commandant, the rest of the outpost either surrenders or runs away. Jerks. We can rest here, right? We can. My favorite drummers include, but are not limited to. Actually, you know what? Green Boy VP, give me a genre of music or a subgenre of music. I'll tell you who, who my, <laughs> obviously number one is Lars. Oh man. Give me a genre or subgenre of music. I'll tell you who some of my favorite drummers are. And why. Rock. So in general, rock, um, John Bonham, because no one has ever sounded like John Bonham. No one ever will again. One of the most unique sounding hard rock drummers of all time. Let's go back to town. Dry greens. Oh no. All right. Problem with Thry Creens is they can hold you fast, which is a condition that never goes away because the game has a glitch. Avoids it. Great. So you can't hit them with range attacks? My god, Thry Creens are dumb. <laughs> I didn't see the held fast conditions. So I think we're okay. Cool. I think that works. Yep, she's not held fast. That's good. There's a maybe you want to play drums or we want to play music. Well, I mean, we are making fun of Lars before, but when I first started playing drums, I wanted to be Lars Ulrich. Mostly to get his gig. <laughs> Outside the clerk's office. Hello, clerk. Before I can offer any commissions, I must see if you're due a current reward. You're pleasantly surprised that you completed your mission so swiftly. Cardorna was wagering her turn be much delayed. Here's your reward. 
Porphyrus Cardurna is a traitor to the city. If you find him, kill him. Council's offering a reward for books, maps, tomes, etc. So we haven't gotten into the library yet. Large tribe of kobolds. Oops. I guess I already talked to the dude. Take the gate. Let's see if anyone can level up. Um, not enough experience, not enough experience, not enough. trying to cost a thousand gold. Oh, hey, Rhonda can level up. Fantastic. Smash mouth. <laughs> I gotta say, I've never liked Smash Mouth. <laughs> never been a fan of their music. The first time I heard um, Walking on the Sun, I was like, that song's kind of cool. And then it just got old. Not enough money. How about now, you... Bastage. Oh, we're looking at Rhonda's items. Heal plus one. Ring of fire resistance. Three potion extra healing. Races on UC three. Ring of fire resistance. Give it to Tyson. Wand of Lightning. I don't know if we can use it. Give it a Ronda. Longsword plus one. Give it a Ronda. I'm just going to give it to St. Peter. Give the shield to Ronda as well, I think. Silva have a magical shield? He does. There we go. Oh wait, he had he had stuff to identify. Yup. Tyson. Non magical longbow. Oh, a longsword plus two. Hey. Ooh, plate mail plus two. Snap crackle. And pop. He already has plate mail plus two. Holy field. Banded mail plus one. Silva. AC minus three. Yeah. So the video of the Smash Mouth singer doing the salute, saying he was going to. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep, I did see that. I did see that. That's very unfortunate. I have to finish my story about Smash Mouth. I heard Walking on the Sun the first time, and I was like, nah, the song's all right. And then I heard it a second time, and I was like, nah. I want to see if we can get into the library. And then, uh, I'm not even going to mention the other song they had. 
because I hate it with a passion. The room is still dirty, has an unpleasant odor, no one's taking care of that? I mean, I cleared it out a while ago. Oh, library is this way. Hey, we got in. Hey, I just bashed the door down. Awesome. You see an empty room. The only feature is a series of frescoes on the walls of learned men and the heavenly patrons of art and learning. Get a feeling of peace. I'm going to fight the basilisk right away. These are library stacks. Old and moldered books are stored on shelves. A sign over the entrance reads rhetoric. Whoa! Combat. Basilisk can turn you to stone. And being turned to stone is basically being dead. I mean, not basically. It, it is. It does mean you die. <laughs> you, you're no longer living. You're made of stone. Dick, dick, dick. Uh, the cloak we're going to give to Tyson because he's not using a shield right now. It's a cloak of displacement. Armor class minus two. It's now minus four, baby. Uh, there's nothing in here. Mathematics. Yep. There are no books to find in there. However, other places, there are tons of books. One of them has five. The other one has eight. History. Oops. So we're going to keep looking here. This will take a little while. Because you, you literally have to sit here and keep searching. While we're doing that, let's talk about something. We can move on and talk about music. Find the history of the North. There's one. You take it? Yes. Norman1217 says he heard a Smash Mouth song at the store. <laughs> I stop and shop last night. I want to punch all the chips on the shelf. <laughs> Ross, how did your party get into the library? I was working and missed it. Um, I used, uh, you find the Grand Historian's Records of the Arts of War. Yep. We take it. There's two. Um, I used my thinking meat and I bashed the door down. We very cleverly smashed the hell out of the door until it until it fell over. That's how we got into the library. I thought long and hard about it, and then I punched it into submission. I wasn't sure if it worked for the library either, but apparently it does. You find Lex Geographica, an atlas drawn by Tamaris, has a map of Flan, which, though old, still could be useful. It becomes entry 37 in your journal. Do you take it? I sure do. That's three. I thought knock was the only way in. I thought so too. I thought so too. We're playing a Dungeons & Dragons game. Let's talk about our favorite D&D &D spells. What are your favorite spells? I'll start. A very classic one. Magic Missile. Man, Magic Missile is such a good spell. Automatic hit. Later editions, it does force damage. Um, the spell really hasn't changed since the first edition. <laughs> Old spells or new spells? Fireball? Just epic? Yeah, fireball's a pretty good one. I didn't ask how big the room was. I said I cast fireball. One of my favorite lines I've ever heard or read about D&D. I'm pretty sure there are more than just three books in this part. Could be wrong, though. 
It could only be three. I don't know if moving around is helpful, but. Um, wall of force, really useful one. Uh, I like darkness and silence for the same reason, but they are encounter breaking spells. Insofar as when those spells are cast, players stop and they're like, I have no idea what to do. I think that's cool to drop on a party every now and then present them with a problem. That's like, I don't know what I can do. Forces them to be, think outside the box and be resourceful and creative. Yeah, such a simple spell. Creative. Are there only three books in here? I thought one of them had five, the other one had eight. Apparently I am wrong. I also, I don't have a thief on the party, I just realized, or any kind of spellcaster, which might increase your chances of finding some of these books. Fighters wouldn't find certain books useful. I just thought of that. That's really weird. Um... Yeah, do you drop darkness on a battlefield? You can't see your opponents, and you're like, what do I do now? Where do I go? The only obvious thing you can do is cast a spell magic on the effect. That's the only, like, obvious thing you can do. Same thing with silence. You cast silence in an area with a bunch of spellcasters. Now the spellcasters are like, what the F do we do? <laughs> it's not as... Um, or just cast fireball <laughs> in darkness. Yeah, I suppose you could. But it has to be a point you see within range, right? You can't see anything. You literally cannot see anything when you're in darkness. So any spell that says you can see within range it won't work. Because it's not like you can you can't see in the in the darkness area. You can't see out of the darkness either. If it, you, you you can't see the edge of the darkness, you can't see beyond it. You're just in darkness. This came up in a game I was playing because my character was in darkness. And I asked the DM if I could target somebody outside the darkness, and he said, you can't see out of darkness. And we looked at the spell, and I couldn't find any evidence that said he was wrong, so my character just curled up into a ball and cried. Philosophy. Talk about killing things in darkness. <laughs> Is those scary? Yeah. I'm attacking the darkness. Find fair deathless discourses on power among all the dry texts. You find an interesting passage. Grab your journal as entry seven. Take it. Yep. Again, I'm not going to read journal entries. I read all of them in the walkthrough. Also, I heavily edited this part of that walkthrough. The library is a lot quicker than it is on stream. Find a book entitled Meditations. Do you take it? I do. That's two. Some other cool spells. Um, Harmony of the Rock. Yeah, you do take it. That's three. Enlarge Reduce is one of my favorite spells. You find Ergon's description of darkness, account of his imprisonment in the lower realms, passive interest, which you copy as journal entry 19. 
Yep, we take it. That's four. Uh, one of my favorite uses of enlarge reduce was uh, a. <laughs> so you guys have seen somebody in chat whose username is Monsteropolis. That's my friend Ben. Um, he and I have been playing D and D together for a few years now. Um, we met in New York, and uh, we were playing in the same group together. Book entitled Strong's Discussions of po uh, Poetics. Yes, we take it. Chronicles of Aram, that's six. Pretty sure there are eight books here. Um, we were being chased by a beholder zombie in a narrow passage. But he's like, I'm gonna cast enlarge on it to get it stuck in the passage and it worked. <laughs> it <was> so great. <laughs> That's how he ran away from Beholder Zombie. That's a cool way to use a spell creatively, I think. Um, Noriman1217, you mentioned to me in person, uh, Discourse and Nature of Writing. Do you take it? Yep. That's what, seven? I think there's one more. Uh, what's that ability that lets you change spell's name? Because you made a joke about making a spell called Power Word Phil instead of Power Word Kill. Where uh, Uncle Phil from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is summoned. It was a joke, but... Um, I found this like homebrewed magic item online that somebody else homebrewed. They called it Ring of the Grammarian. It lets you change one letter in a spell's name. <laughs> or maybe it was one word. I don't actually remember. And I was like, that sounds like it would be really fun for players and just really, <laughs> really bad for DMs. I almost put it in. I almost put it in the game that I run with you. Power word fill was compulsory air drumming. Oh, right. <laughs> compulsory air drumming the break in, in the air tonight. So it's Otto's irresistible dance, basically. I thought there was one more book. I think I'm wrong. Maybe it is only seven and three. I thought it was eight. Talk about researching a new spell, like as outlined Strongholds and Followers, but gotcha, yeah. Strongholds and Followers by Matthew Colville, my D&D &D spirit animal. We're done here. We got what we needed. Bash. Under halls filled with rows of writing tables and high stools. Rotted mounds of parchment litter the floor. There's gold foil in here that is worth nothing. That apparently we can't find. Amid the trash, you find a box that contains gold foil. You take it. Yep, zero. Three sheet of golds. <laughs> they're not worth anything. I don't know why they're here. You've entered a storeroom full of supplies. Cobalt's. They stand, arms raised, and surrender. Parlay. Well, Cobalt says, if you spare our lives, we will tell you all we know about this area. We spare them? Yeah, sure. Journal entry 10, they describe the surrounding area. It's this, just a textile house. We already did that. I forget what's here. Rune rune. Blah, 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 blah. Jar under the floorboards. You take it? Yep. Oh, potions. Flint. Madman. Find a fighter with battered armor and wild eyes cowering in the corner. 
Hi, mercy, mercy, you cries, and then uh, suddenly die, die, you slime from the pit. Uh, ignore. He runs away. The room was once a study, it is now a shattered ruin. Buried amid all the trash, you see a book. Do you take it? Yes. The Manual of Bodily Health, baby. All right, we're going to fight a, a specter. And the library is done. Specter suddenly appears before you. Thief, I defended these books in life. I will defend them in death. Whatever, you a-hole. Freaking son of a... Here I got drained for two levels. <laughs> that means we're loading the game. <laughs> oh, so specters, whites, vampires. When they hit you, they drain levels. Whites drain one level. Specters and vampires drain two. Two levels. We're not about that life. Uh, one of my favorite cleric spells in D&D &D is, uh, in 5th edition at least, Spirit Guardians. That's a fun spell. I never regret casting Spirit Guardians. Tongues is also a fun spell. Oh, he went first. I didn't like that much. Yeah, we're going to use the uh, plus one arrows for this. Oh, my God. Plus three versus undead. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> Ugga wugga. Spectre's giving us some trouble. <laughs> but I was saying, I, uh, I've never cast Spirit Guardians and then regretted it later. It's always a good spell to cast. All right, Spectre son of a bitch, he missed me. Got him. Okay, we did it. Let's do the gate. Whoops. Get some bloodthirsty cobalt. This should be fun. Movement. 
Uh. Some of my other favorite spells are like the cryptic ones. I don't know if you ever, if, if you guys are familiar with Augury in 5th edition. That's kind of a fun spell. Um, Augury is like, you know, you... It's like omen reading. And your deity returns either a wheel or a woe response. So you do something like, I cast Augury. And I ask, is it safe to rest here? And you get a wheel or a woe response. Wheel meaning good. Woe meaning bad. And it's never a spell I ever prepared as a cleric, but in Dungeon of the Mad Mage, <laughs> when you use the dwarven, the dwarven portals, the stone portals, a random effect could happen. And that happened to my character, who wasn't a cleric. The DM rolled, and he goes, you can now cast Augury. <laughs> Three times. I was like, okay. And I cast it, and the first thing I asked was, is it safe to rest here? We were, after all, in the house of a lich. Who we had defeated. But we weren't sure if the lich was coming back. Because we, we never found its phylactery. But he said, wheel. So we rested. Oh, no. Knowles, just let me through. You guys are the worst. Other spells along those lines, along the lines of augury, I mean, um, clairvoyance, um, gaish. Clairvoyance shows you like what's on the other side of a door or something, so it's not the same thing. But gaish, you get to communicate with your deity. There's a chance that they will actually come and help you. Or send a messenger, or send someone to help you. Wish. Anything that lets a DM also be creative. <laughs> I tell you right now, player in one of my games ever cast Wish? I gonna wish they, ha they hadn't. <laughs> Wish, if you're unfamiliar, it's just, you just, you cast it, and you say, I wish, blank, actually, I want to do this during the day. Man driving a wagon full of food and equipment starts to drive past you going north. This is why I want to do this during the day. Early. I sure I'll sell you my wagon. It'll cost you, all it'll cost is 250 gold. Yeah, sure. But you're doing business with you. Here's your wagon. How do you get this wish spell? It is a ninth level wizard spell. Can any other class cast it? In 5th edition? I'm going to look this up real quick. Um, sorcerers can cast it as well. Sorcerers and wizards. It's ninth level. So the, the, the moment you get access to a ninth level spell slot, you can learn the spell wish. I'm telling you right now. It's, uh, 
dangerous boat. Bugbears. Bear walks up to you. Okay, let's have the 15 gold. Do you pay him? Yes. Bugbear takes the money and the gate opens. You proceed through. So we disguise ourselves as traitors to get through the gate. Now we're going to assault the towers. Yes, I do. Enter guard room. There are tables, chairs, and beds here. All but two of the beds are 14 feet long. Two humans and three Etten in the room. You ever hear the fighter tell the mage, better watch your talk. Last guy who gave the boss lip was thrown through the trap door to the Medusa. Seem unaware of you. Combat. Alarm starts ringing. Can it backfire? What a question. <laughs> Here's the answer. Absolutely. The thing that determines whether or not it backfires is quite literally the whim of the dungeon master. I don't think I'll learn that spell then. Don't be afraid. Um, the only example I can think of right now is you could wish for somebody to be dead. It really, it depends on how you word the wish, right? Like, I wish so-and-so was no more. It could outright kill the person or exile them or whatever. It could teleport you to time when they weren't living um, it'll fulfill your wish it'll come true but maybe not always in the way you think I just want the alarm to stop ringing Wishes always come true. They're not always, uh, they don't always come true in the manner you think they will. Okay, no more alarm. It's cool. Yes, I do want to go downstairs. Let's go to the other tower. Yes, I do want to go upstairs. You ever seen Wishmaster? I haven't. How much longer must we wait before assaulting Flan? I'm eager to become a Baron. Ouch. You ever seen the yo yo man? The yo yo master? He just kept on yoing. Ow, ow. Oh, holy feels getting shit wrecked. Wow, how's that Eden still alive? I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. Yo-Yo Ma. There's this old uh, vine. I knew. Yo-Yo Master Vine. Someone asking him how they can become a Yo-Yo Master, but he didn't answer. He just kept on yoing. It's pretty silly. Got him. Then again, Vine itself. Pretty silly. I don't know if any of that stuff is magical. I'm gonna rest up, get our hit points back. 
make sure the alarm isn't ringing. The alarm is ringing. There are patrols of giants and stuff who stop you. We're just, we don't have time for that. <clears throat> yeah, that's a little information about the spell Wish. There are some pretty insane ninth level spells. So just on uh when was it? Saturday. We have to fight the bugbears now. Bugbears are waiting on the other side of the gate. Alarm starts ringing. On Saturday, they're celebrating my mom's birthday. And uh, Nowhere Man 1217. Um, What's Gabriel's username on Twitch? Why am I drawing a blank? But uh, Gabriel was, um, I don't know, put the plate armor back on. Psycho, Psycho St. Pierre. We were talking about ninth level spells, how crazy some of them are. Like for instance, True Polymorph. That's an interesting spell. That's a spell you might be interested in, Bean Boy VP. So there's a spell called Polymorph. You can turn a living thing into another living thing temporarily. Uh, so you could do something crazy like cast Polymorph on a beholder. And if it fails at save, you can turn it into like a butterfly or something like that. Temporarily. True polymorph, however. The thing is permanently changed if it's in that state for an hour. So you can polymorph yourself into a dragon. <laughs> well, you can polymorph yourself into something of a certain challenge rating and just be that forever. If you chose. I don't know if you could do a dragon. <laughs> Maybe you could. Um, there is no ninth level divination spell. I don't. Oh, they're surrendering. Teddy bears are surrendering. Dang it. You're going to pay for that. Got him. Cool, we've taken the gate. Taking the gate, you open the great portals as 20 human and demi-human guards immediately take possession of the guard towers. So Sweet. Let's go collect our reward and we go the quick way, which is leaving the city. Leave. Going all the way around like this. And then take a boat back to the civilized area. Yep. Just for a couple hours. 
Yes, you can. Oops, not buy. View items. Identify this. Nine strength, cool. Healing, great. Sell these because we can't cast them. Extra healing. Returned you have. Talk like Yoda, you do. Hello, Birdman4793. Good to see you. I uh, give extra healing to Holyfield. Give potion of healing to Tyson. Potion of giant strength to Silva. Book of displacement. Potion of extra healing. A lot of gold now. Manual of bodily health. Tyson's constitution is 19. He's going to read a manual. Um, ooh, ring of protection plus two. Uh, Silva. Be waiting, waiting to crack this poor joke. <laughs> Team doesn't know knock. It's like Ricky Bobby when he didn't know what to do with his hands. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't know knock. We just uh, freaking bashed the door down. Ain't nothing, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Cool. Well, alrighty. We'll collect our rewards, see if anybody levels up. And I'll probably take a short break. We'll come back and we'll do, um, I don't know, maybe the Cobalts. There's a reward for clearing the library. Here it is. Yeah, we'll take that platinum. That's a whole level. Getting a level, I mean, costs 200 platinum. Are these discourses valuable? Sure you do. Amused by these descriptions. Here's your reward. These maps are good. Maps, good. Take money. These histories contain much useful information. Cool. Records provide insights to much that was puzzling. Here's your reward. This material is of small value. Here's a reward. <laughs> your taking of the gate will enable forces to assault the enemy stronghold. Return there to lead the attack. Here's your reward. Ooh. That's a decent amount of experience. Large tribe of kobolds. These are all the commissions currently available. Great. We got kobolds, graveyard, castle. And the game's done. It was filled with dueling pairs. No, I don't duel. Yep. Out of experience. Rats. Okay. Oh, I gotta do the dueling pairs thing again? Come on. No, no, get away from me, you freaking creep. We're gonna do the cobalts next. Actually, I wanna do, no, I'm gonna do the cobalts next. I really, I want to do the graveyard. But alas, we should do the cobalts first so we can get the Afridi bottle. Stay. Put search on. Group of minotaurs. Ah, uh, I don't want to fight minotaurs. Uh, they look like characters from Futurama or something. Mm -hmm. The little tusks look like they like the Matt Groening animation style, like teeth that just kind of like the overbite thing. I don't know, man. Let's just 
just what I see when I see them. And to me, they're also wearing red PJs. Is that red? I'm a little colorblind. So if that color isn't red, that's why I think they're wearing PJs. Looks like a reddish brown to me. Hiya. Why are you so weighed down? I don't know. Oops, 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 oops. Okay, that was pointless. Let's continue on, continue on. Dreaming of Horde of Cobalt is a text party. We found them. We found them. Uh, they're all out of range. That's poopy. Uh. Oh, I forgot to do the manual of bodily health. I'm so stupid. Great about the main bodily health for a dwarf is if you max them out to 19 in the constitution department, man of the bodily health will make their constitution 20. Which means they naturally regain hit points over time if they're wounded. Really useful. Having 20 for an ability score is very rare. He's got a longbow. His leader should be in range. Longbow. Yep. Ugh. Longbows have a very long range. In all editions of Dungeons and Dragons, ungodly amount of range. Sweet. Ow. Uh, not being able to move is really upsetting me. Do 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 boop boop boop. I 
I was on uh, Reddit this morning. Right before it went live, actually. Um, interesting discussion. I was a plus two longsword in his inventory. That I forgot about. Uh, um, every now and then I'll check. There's a subreddit called DM Academy. And I like to check it every now and then and then, you know, squirt my opinion everywhere and then leave. Because I have a lot to say about running Dungeons and Dragons. There's something on there today about guys in a group with a um, with players who rotate dungeon master duties, like every group should do. And it hasn't he hasn't been a DM in a while. He or she, I don't know if it's a or non-binary person. I don't know uh, what their pronouns are. Uh, but this particular dungeon master hasn't done it in a while. And they realized that they weren't keeping track of party resources, things like hit points, how many spell slots they use, they just weren't really thinking about it. And they were looking for advice on... Their question was, how do I make sure the party doesn't feel like they're overwhelmed? when I throw an encounter at them that they might not have resources to uh, I guess survive so I had, I had a lot of things to say about this including number one if you're a player of Dungeons and Dragons I didn't even know there's, there's still kobolds on the field uh, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, this is for you. It's not the DM's job to keep track of player stuff. Not. Nah. See a small group of kobolds entering a small concealed cave. A larger, more noticeable cave lies just east of the small hidden cave. What we do? Enter the large one. Let's fight the wyvern. No, I don't want to leave. It's not the DM's job to either keep track of your hit points and spell slots and number of channel divinities or um, lay on hands pool, whatever it is. It's also not the DM's job to know how every ability works. That's the player's job. DM's got enough to worry about. Or you lies a huge wyvern and it rises up and charges. Wyvern can poison you. Oh, I gotta give the, ah, the plus two lungs somebody Ooh. no there we go holy fields using the plus two mace hold on to that silva actually hold on to the broadsword who's using the flail same pier the same here, you're going to get the plus two longsword. Um, yep. Amongst the nest, you find treasure. So this is one of the points in the game. I was talking earlier in the stream about how there's um, for certain encounters, there's the same treasure, the same loot. Uh, there are a few spots in the game where it's randomized. This is one where it's randomized. Let's see what we get. Gems and jewelry. Broadsword and two-handed sword. Not bad. Not bad. Football seems to boil it from nowhere. St. Pierre's one movement. It's 
rough terrain here in the Cobalt Caves for some reason. I don't know why. It doesn't actually ever explain it, but it is. Another thing I'll say about the DM Academy post um, I saw today, and I gave this advice in my reply. I know it's a controversial statement I'm about to make, but it helps me at least to pay attention to challenge rating. All right, everybody, calm down. Calm down. I know you're all at home like, challenge rating is stupid. I disagree wholeheartedly. I'll tell you why. Actually, does anybody have any armor for Princess Fatima? We have the bracers, which will help her. Um, no, it doesn't look like we have any armor. Usually I keep around an extra suit of something for NPCs like Princess Fatima, who we will meet very soon. So I'm going to take some studded leather. Actually. Not Rhonda. Give it to uh, St. Pierre. St. Pierre already can't move. Now, challenge rating. I find to be incredibly helpful. Hidden in a narrow crevice is an old crippled cobalt. It croaks weakly for water. What do you do? Give it water, man. Rosalind tells you it's tail. You record in your journal entry. Journal entry 20. I'm not going to be reading journal entries. Uh, after it's done, it leaves. Let it leave. Tells you about a drunk cobalt here. Oh, cobalt seemed to boil up from nowhere. Great. Cool. So now I can talk about challenge rating. When I first. I ran. Fifth edition for the first time in 20. When was that? 2019? It was sometime after. Fifth edition to come out, but when was that? Let's see, I left Kinect in 2018. Yeah, it was 2019. I was very new to the system. I was new to being a dungeon master at all, actually. I had DM before, but never seriously. Or as seriously as I was taking it this time around. And I had an encounter, the first combat encounter in this homebrew campaign I had written. And I asked myself, is a combat encounter involving zombies and bandits? Long story. Kind of a cockamamie idea, but the idea is that bandits were turning, there's a necromancer using bandits and zombies to further some plot. And the bandits would have zombies on leashes. <laughs> Weird idea, I know. But I was just running with it. It was the first idea I had, so I just... Uh, I just did it. I was like, hey, we're here to give things a try. But uh, the question arose. I was like, what number of bandits and zombies should the party face? How many should I put in the encounter? I was like, I don't know the answer to this because I don't know what's going to be too easy and what's going to be too difficult. The thing you don't want to do is TPK a party in the first, first fight. You also don't want to bore the party in the first fight either. Steep rubble slope. We go up? Yes. Slide it over rocks. Cool. Drunk and cobalt lies here. What do you do? Kill it! Cobalt dies. <laughs> Unceremoniously. We don't have a thief in the party, so guess what? We're going to spring a lot of traps. Net entangles you. Beautiful. So I opened the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I learned how to use the challenge rating table. 
and for the size of the party I had. I found a number of bandits and zombies that was appropriate. And here's what happened. Party had a lot of fun. So now we use challenge rating as a good barometer. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a, uh, there are online tools to help you calculate challenge rating or XP to award. I think the XP to award is a much more exact way of doing it. That's the same thing. Challenge rating will tell you whether or not an encounter you have designed is trivial, easy, medium difficulty, hard, or deadly, meaning you can expect at least one PC to die. Now it has its limitations. It doesn't account for how many magic items your party has. It doesn't account for how long it's been since the party has had a rest of any kind, short or long. All of these things should be considered when you're designing an encounter for your players. But it is a really good, really good starting point. Get all the bows for encounter design in the latest edition of D. And I would strongly recommend people pay attention to it. Even if you throw it out the window, you should look at it every time and then reevaluate how accurate it was just so you can learn more about how to design your own encounters. Someday I'm going to do a full YouTube video on it, but today is not that day. In defense of challenge rating. Oh, I was in a boiler from nowhere. Yeah, yeah. The next edition of D&D is coming out. 2024. Mark the 50th anniversary of the hobby. Of the game. Of the lifestyle. Um... One thing I would like to see is an expansion on challenge rating tables. If someone could figure out a way, and I've thought about it, and it's difficult, but I think it's possible, to provide dungeon masters and encounter designers a challenge rating table of some sort that can account for that has weights and variables that can account for uh, weights that can account for certain variables like magic items or the potency of magic items. How many common magic items? Um, how many rare, very rare, legendary, wondrous, whatever the party has in their possession, or how many? to which they're attuned. How many spell slots might be available? That, this is all stuff that a DM might not have on hand. Because again, it's not their job to keep track of these things. But if they estimated, like, I, I think the party has something like party of four, each one has one magic item and maybe a potion of healing. So you put like one magic item, one potion of healing. Um, it'll adjust the encounter, the challenge rating for you. That's something, if there was a way to put it into a digestible table that was easy to use, I'd love to see that. That's what hung in here, the age moldy, root slime places. Oh shit, that's not where I want to be. Not yet, eventually we want to go there. First I want to find Princess Fatima. There you are. From a young woman in barbarian finery, she drops a cobalt to strangle when she sees you. I am Princess Fatima. Journal entry 16. Yes, join the party. What do you have for items already? Drop that leather armor, girl.
pick pick the uh, studded leather. She already has a shield. I'm gonna give her the bracers, armor class three. to give her a better weapon too. Our mental 17 says, yeah, challenge rating is handy, but hard to use. I might be mistaken, but I think challenge ratings try to account for magic items. Assumes a cap of three magic items, scale them for tiers of play. But it's really hard to account for all variables like class and subclass combinations. There's just so many in the power level of party can fluctuate wildly depending on party composition. Yeah. And challenge rating is a really good starting point. I want more of it. I want more help designing encounters. That's what I want. I want to be. I'll give her the longsword plus one. I want to be absolutely sure that combat encounter I'm about to present to a party is going to be fun. That's what I want. And if there was a table that told me how fun something was going to be before it happened, in a crude barracks on one wall is a crude map. You record it in your crude journal under crude entry 28. Or he's a horde of kobolds. Behind them are two men and an ancient kobold on a wooden throne. One says, these men are enemies. Defeat them and my lord shall be most generous. The king looks at him and screams, kill them. Oh god, I hate this <laughs> so much. Yeah, we got to fight three waves of kobolds here, if you remember. <laughs> Nora Man's making a really good point. I'm just reading what he wrote. Oops. Uh... No, 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 no. I'm uh, saying I definitely subscribe to Creighton Broadhurst of Raging Swan Press's perspective that there is probably too much emphasis on encounter balance. It's good to throw in really easy encounters with the party trounces, as well as encounters that parties have no business being in and need to get the H out of there. And everything in between. The fun factor of an encounter probably has less to do with balance than just interesting features and knowing your players and what they like. Being a DM is hard. <laughs> yeah. I tend to skip the encounters... That are too easy for a party. And to do them very sparingly. Mostly because I don't really want to waste anyone's time. And my favorite thing to do in D&D &D as a DM is to unbalance encounters. My parties usually are way more powerful than they should be. I shower them with magic items and stuff because magic items are fun and cool. Uh, and then I like to mess with monsters. Give them crap tons of hit points and lair actions and legendary actions they don't have in the book. One of the best encounters I ever designed was against um, an orc war chief, an orcish cleric, and a hill giant. I had a lair action that dropped a portcullis. Cut the party in two. Good times. Spellcaster, a war chief, and a hill giant is a lot to throw at a level five party. But according to challenge rating, it was pretty close to what should have been challenging for them, and it turned out to be pretty challenging. So I find that to be a success.
I know Orange 17 was in that Orc Chief War, the Orc War Chief fight. But it was great. Check out Monsters is great. It's good to keep players on their toes. People like me who read way too much no stat blocks and stuff can't meta game if you're reskinning monsters. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to completely reskin a monster. Just tinker with them a little bit. So that Abolith fight was the most epic battle ever. Yeah, that was like everything I found in the. Just opening up to the monster manual. Yeah, throw that in there. Throw that in there. Again, I used challenge rating to design that encounter, and it was it was a good one. And trust me, there have been combat encounters with that group specifically, where um, challenge rating told me it was going to be one thing, and it turned out to be too easy or too difficult for certain parties. But you learn. Challenge rating is supposed to be a good baseline. You gotta learn with each group what the sort of butter zone is, right? I'm running one campaign with three different groups of players right now. And each group of players has its own has its own thing. No Man 1217, your group loves to min-max characters and come up with spell combinations that it, that break the encounter. You call it metagaming. You guys are just kind of trying to play the optimal version of your character in combat. So now as a as a as an encounter designer, I gotta account for that. Knowing you guys are probably gonna break any hard encounter I throw at you. So when I design a hard encounter, it has to have a unique feature about it that's gonna make it challenging for you guys. That same encounter might TPK third group, who are mostly new players. Case in point, the actual TPK I ran with that group in the same campaign. The second group just barely won that encounter. It was dramatic and fun, and I wanted to try and recreate that, but I ended up just killing the party. <laughs> All right, Troll died there. Uh, Silva's standing on top of a dead troll. Remember, trolls regenerate, so... <clears throat> Roman 1217 says, It was also the setup and the cliffhanger from the previous session with Ricky being totally exposed. Gabe having a plane shifted. Yeah. It was like, every, it was like an episode from a D&D &D show. Everything's going to hell. How are they going to pull through? Yeah, shape water and dragging the abolith out of the water. Yeah. That was how you guys defeated... And when I mean defeated, I mean you guys killed the abolith. So far, you're the only group to have done so. Wait, where's the other troll? I don't remember where the other troll died. Uh oh. One died where that troll is standing. died right there. One died where Silva is, but then one died somewhere else. And I don't remember where it was. I wasn't paying attention. Talking about D&D &D too much. Oh no. Holyfield standing over two of them. I'm screwed. I don't think anyone is mega hurt. Or else I would sit here 
drinking potions and stuff. I don't think we... No, you stay right there. I don't think we have time to do that. Rhonda's hurt. Oh no, she's doing fine. Oh my god, you guys have to hit something. No. Our Princess Fatima's going down. Bundy's unkillability, yeah. And just how her character's backstories tie into the overall narrative of the campaign. Character backstories are important for a DM to understand, and you don't have to put them into your narrative the way I have, but I think it's a good idea when you do. Use the secret weapons! We're just having hit for six points of damage. Okay, so she's dying. Bandage. Uh, this encounter is not so bad. Nothing bad about it is sometimes uh, a board that stands up and grins will just randomly die and then the game crashes. I don't know exactly why that happens, but it does. All oh, the leaders are over here. All the single leaders, all the single leaders. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, one of my favorite things to do in D&D is to overpower encounters. So you have this super powerful party going up against a super powerful monster encounter. Or damage is being dealt. And people are going down. <laughs> it's all about creating drama. Matthew Colville always says drama is tension and release. That's drama in a nutshell. So when you create um, an encounter, it's your job to build the tension as the player's job to find the release point. And a very, very easy and I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to say it doesn't take a genius <laughs> to design an encounter like this. Very easy way to build that tension is to just throw the kitchen sink at the PCs. The PCs go, oh my god, how the hell are we going to get out of this? There's the tension. <laughs> and the release is, you know, you let them attune to more than three things. <laughs> and they just fight their way out of it. Stands up and grins. Oh! Holy Field's been taking a beating. Oh, we did. We haven't done the Temple of Bane yet, I don't think. We gotta do that. Yeah, weaving character backstories and increases player investment in the story and characters in the world. Yeah. It reinforces a very important uh, aspect of Dungeons & Dragons, which is it is a collective storytelling game. And what better way to collectively storytell than to have player backstories be part of the lore. Um, it's a very easy way to invite players to help you build the world. And you can't forget as a dungeon master, this is one of the 
one of the pillars. Like I have a, I have my own like code as a DM. No matter what I'm doing, I, I always have this in mind. But you constantly want to, one of the pillars is always be inviting players to build the world with you. And a very literal way of doing that is to have their backstory as part of your lore. Um, or to introduce an NPC the player wrote about in their backstory. Like when a player gives you their, their backstory, they're like, yeah, I had a, a brother who did so-and-so and that's why I do this. They might not, ex they're not necessarily expecting you to put their brother into your game. But if you do, <laughs> they're like, oh, I came up with that. That's my thing. My friend Ben, who I talked about earlier at the stream, whose username is Monsteropolis, um, has run a few games that I've played in. One of them was on Twitch. We're streaming, and he paid incredibly close attention to our backstories. And, um, and he even... Uh, asked us a bunch of questions about the NPCs we had mentioned in our in our backstories. Like, the, my character was a Arcana cleric uh, who worked in an orphanage before he became, a, like, an adventurer. And uh, he was adventuring to raise money for the orphanage and also to... He's sick of the injustice, he sees. Like, he, all the orphans are victims of... Um, his world is like a steam it's like a it's relatively low magic steampunk oriented uh, game where like uh, corporations are oligarchies basically and they run everything it's fantasy right that doesn't happen in the real world um, what was I saying Oh, my character, yeah. So he, he would ask me, like, uh, he told us all, you need three NPCs I can use so I can learn more about your character and, and their background. Uh, which is a really interesting exercise as a dungeon master. To require your players to give you NPCs that uh, your character has in their network. And I remember, uh, I don't remember who my three NPCs were, actually. It's been a while since we streamed. One of them was my brother. <laughs> Who's a cop in the main city. So we'll see what he does with that. But I have connections at the orphanage, too. Uh, where was I going? There was a I had a point to make and I forgot what it was. I'm just kind of rambling right now. But with your group, Nowhere Man 1217, you all wrote backstories for your characters and I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. I want to put that in my game. Case in point, your backstory involving who's turned out to be the big bad evil guy of the campaign. <laughs> I was like, that, there you go, boom. I read your backstory, I was like, there's the, there's the bad guy. I didn't even have to come up with him. Players did the work for me. Now I had to figure out who he was and everything, but honestly, it's not that difficult to role play a Death Knight. I can't wait to kill him. <laughs> you will. Well, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to, I should say. You technically already had one opportunity. You know what? I'm going to shoot you. Free up Rhonda to sweep some more things. Are you darn right I will? You did have an opportunity to kill him. But he got away. 
I was 100% planning on you guys killing him. I was like, this party doesn't show mercy. It's not like you were merciful. But you didn't attack him, you contained him, you took out his minions, and then he just left. But the point is, and involving NPCs in the story is a very easy way to um, invite, to make players feel like they're invited to help build the world. Men sneer at the king. One says, let us show you how warriors fight. Real warriors fight. Nuggets. Not the flail. This. Ouch. These guys have wands of magic missile, I think, right? Yeah, let's stick with the sword in this one. Rhonda! Ow. Shit. One hit point, come on, son. Stands up and grins. Got him. Stop it! Freaking a-holes. Ow. I just like screaming stop at it people. <laughs> I think it's funny. You stand up and grin at that, you son of a bitch. Alright, let's put our mace away and use our potion of extra healing. That helps. Sweep! Oh, come on, dude. You guys must hit things. Thank you. Those guys have a lot of hit points. Oh. Will you cut up that shit out? Crap. He's got a potion of extra healing. Holy field. <laughs> Holy field. There we go. How are you doing? 15? Can't use the Wand of Lightning. Or the Wand of Paralyzation. It's duplicated. What in the holy hand grenade of Antioch is that nonsense? You son of a bitch. I think I'm standing where the troll died, so... I think we're good. I think we have the trolls... taken care of. Mace. 
shield. Short bow. Go. Ouch. Got him. Great. Nope. We win. Ah, uh, yeah. All that stuff is magical. Silva. Not all that stuff. The plate isn't magical, but the two handed swords are. And short swords aren't. Nope. The king has escaped during the fight. Great. Find a secret door. We're going to try resting here. Oh, man. Princess Fatima went down again. Let's try resting here for 12 days. Cool. Let's try resting here for another 12 days. Nah. All right, I think that's all we'll be able to do. Here we go. Reach the king's quarters and confront his guards. More trolls. Hooray. Up, oh, using a short bow. Ouch. Let's see if we can hit one of these leaders. Yeah. All right. All right, troll went down right there. Cobalt standing on a troll. Cobalt still on a troll. Nothing. Okay. Fatima on a troll.
got him. Ends up in grins. Fatima and uh, St. Pierre standing on a trail. Keep blocking each other out here. Uh, where's the two-handed sword? There it is. Oh, he doesn't have a bow. Yes, he does. There it is. I'm just shooting at random stuff right now. Excuse me. Ow! Why did you do that? Didn't feel good at all. That was a risk. I'm trying to get uh, Tyson in there. Um, actually, change the item first. Now Fatima is the only one standing on a troll. Now Rhonda is there. St. Pierre's on a troll. Come on. I think Tyson's on a troll. I didn't say it aloud, which means I think I might be wrong. Nope. Doesn't matter now. <laughs> Tyson's a freaking sharpshooter with that thing. No, I don't want to go and claim the treasure. We did it! We win! Ash. The king, panicked, has fallen into his own spiked pit and died. What a douche. Strewn across the floor is the cobalt's treasure. Um, We'll take the gems and jewelry. We're going to leave the copper. Uh, none of this is of any use to us. But we'll take the mage scrolls just to sell them. See a brass bottle jammed into a crack here. What we do, pull it out. As you pull, the stopper comes loose and smoke billows out. I am the Afridius Amir Awal. You are not my master, or are you perchance vampires? What do you do? I say no. Fool, some of me only when a vampire is near. Dick, get free bottle. Get it. Let's see how long we can rest. Or we're attacked by kobolds. Well, we beat the kobold caves with nothing but fighters. Seven fighters. <laughs> Cobalt's appear and bombard you with rocks. Freaking jerk offs. All right, let's get out of here. I am done with this place. 
B U N done. I'm absolutely going the wrong way. I'm just going to wander around until I find an exit. I'm already lost. I've already forgotten which way I'm supposed to go. Um, here we go. Boom. We did it. Aha. Uh -huh. Stop boiling up from nowhere. Jerks. Sick of it. Why are we all of a sudden missing kobolds, guys? Put your head's in the game. Oh, unacceptable! Here we go. Ali's the only one who knows what the heck's going on. away already? Jerks. What the shit is up with this cobalt? Yeah, we'll shoot an arrow at him. No, we won't shoot an arrow at him. We don't have a we don't have a bow. <laughs> That's freaking embarrassing. Got him. Let us leave. Wanna leave? Yes. Princess says I should go to my own go my own way now. You can go your own way. Yeah, I'm gonna rest in the pyramid. Enter. We already did the pyramid. River's all clean. I'm gonna go pay a visit to the Silver Dragon Diogenes, show him the bottle. Senpai notice me, he doesn't give you anything for it. And he says he'll send you on another quest, but he never does. It was basically a Senpai notice me moment for us. Which we can skip, but I'm not Gunsta. Go back. Enter cave. I see you have recovered the silver bottle from the Cobalt Caves. I congratulate you. The bottle contains a powerfully freed who was summoned to kill vampires. He will be a valuable ally at Old Flat. In Valhingen Graveyard, there is a vampire. You meet the vampire, use the bottle, and you may have a chance in defeating him. I wish you luck. North Cave. Thanks, Diogenes. What happens if we go back? Find nothing of interest. Yeah, he just... That's it. They could have done more there, but it's all right that they didn't. Rise a group of merchants, parlate. Or just greet you and exchange pleasantries. Group of nomads, parlate. Private group of lizardmen, parlay, abusive. Group of bandits, parlay, abusive. Uh, leave. Take the boat.
rest here for about eight hours. Get some shat identified. Uh, just the plus one broadsword, sell that. Transfer plus one, sell that. That's disappointing. Oh well. Not all magic items can be winners. Ali, buy a longbow, will you? Holy Field's got nothing. This two handed sword plus two. Okay, well, we'll hold on to that. Just for now. Got nothing to identify. Rhonda. Sell. Sell. Dinosaur plus two. Three. Let's go get a reward for the Cobalt Cave and see if anybody levels up. And we'll do the Temple of Bane. And then we'll do the graveyard, and then we'll do the castle, and then the game will be done. Beanboy VP says, any skull piles? We'll do the graveyard later. Lost of the Cobalt Force would be a major blow to the enemy. Here's your reward. Share. Uh, I can offer the following. These are all the commissions currently available. Cool. You duel? No. Is your partner for your mentoring? Hell no. Yeah, I want to train. Come on, son. Everybody's level six, right? Is that is that the cap? Is level six the cap for fighters? I if I can become level seven. Or even level eight. How much ex freaking experience do we need? Jeepers crow. XP chart. Mm, pool of radiance. Yeah, level eight. Level seven, we need 70,000 experience. Oh, we're so close. So close, I can, I can taste it. Ali is, at least. And we need 125,000 uh, for level 8. Then that's it. This game caps you at levels. The only thing about the game I really hate. Everybody's so close. So far. All right. Let's blow this popsicle stand. I'm gonna go pick up Tyler Durton over here. He's right there. Ushered into the bishop, the bishop study. Bishop Braku speaks. Allow me to choose Durton, priest of Ilmar. He's bound to recover the temple which has been desecrated to Bane. Go with him across the river and help him to cleanse the temple. In payment, we may keep the hidden treasures. Will the company Durton? Sure. So Durton if you remember, is my least favorite NPC. Because he's a moron who doesn't actually really help you do anything. Yes. So, we're going to change him up a little bit. Magic. Cast. Bless is cool, but... We're going to do this instead. Slow poison. Don't need it. Spiritual hammer. Nobby. Find traps, useless. Cure, cure. Hold, hold, hold. Then I guess, uh, well, magic. Sure, that works. And you need some better armor, my friend. we take any of that plate with us? I don't think we did. It wasn't magical, so we left it. 
Somebody have a shield? Non magical shield? I don't even think this guy comes with a shield. Yeah, see? We'll give him some plate mail and a shield. He's not completely frickin' useless. Looking at some other stuff. Do 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 do. Take the shield. Take the plate mail. Oh, armor class two. Best we can hope for is that he absorbs some hits before he goes down. Take the north side of the bay. Ali will pay. What about? Uh, we want the north side of the city. Turn on that search. This is the Koval Mansion, which we've already done. I think we've already cleared out the wealthy area too, right? Prize by goblins. Fantastic. Maybe we haven't done this part. I kind of remember we did. Same here. Why are you so encumbered? Drop this. We don't need that. Goblin sure made a mistake, surprising us. Oh, you son of a bitch. Why are you so encumbered? Guess it's all the money. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. out of arrows. Actually, I'm going to save my arrows. For what purpose? I'll save them anyway. We don't really need to use them now, but we have a chance to use them in the big fight. Temple of Bane is not an easy not an easy thing for party of all fighters. All those uh, he's got plenty of arrows. All those uh, orc leaders how many arrows you got? Eh. Goblins, be surrendering. You guys didn't have any arrows, did you? No. Uh, uh about a group of hog goblins. Early abusive. I guess we didn't do this yet. So do let's. 
Oh yeah, we didn't. We never got these uh, holy symbols. I bet. So we have not done a wealthy area yet. Take items, six other holy symbols. You only need one of them. Have. Oops. Drop. Drop. Doot, doot, doot. All right, abusive. Most better watch your step. You feel the wrath of Bane. Whatever. So inside a large mansion. Uh, we'll do the large mansion later. Do this one. Large group of orcs who are surprised that you're here with confused looks on their faces as they stare at you. I bet. Where are you going? What are you casting? <laughs> Wasn't necessary, but okay. Yeah, sure, come around the back. I want you to. Stop. Stop casting. Stop doing it. Got him. Okay. Nope. Take. Actually, gonna leave that. Here, don't mind us, you know, just murdering everything. Yes, we will open the trap door. We found treasure. Sir, Durton, why don't you take the clerical scroll? Clerical scroll. It was filled with the dead bodies that works. Previous victims missed the bodies. You find some jewelry. You take it? Yep. Take three. Goblins. Goblin slays. They're carring in the corner. I'll scream, please don't kill us. What do you do? Let them go. As they leave, one of them says they enter the temple. Bane, you need a holy symbol. We got one. Don't worry. Tell them to F off. God, didn't I just tell you guys to F off? Me. 
remains of a once great dining room. Furniture lies burned and broken throughout the room underneath a broken table. Found a crushed skeleton. That's a jewelry on it. Do you take it? Yep. 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 Go with the rubble and waste. In the rubble, you spot a beautiful tapestry. Will you take it? Sure. We actually just left it. Yep, yep. Really abusive. Ogres. Six orcs led by a large ogre. They lunge. Stop casting. Piece of paper. Three hundred fifty-three. Cool. Oh, all right. Uh, let's go to that mansion. On the walls of the mansion are crude black handprints. Enter to filthy room. Eight orc guards attack you immediately. Boom. Uh. Got him. Uh, there's really nothing of value here. Crude hay beds, but we do leave them. If you search them, they'll uh, you get a taxi. Ready, watch. Uh, I already said I'll leave them. There's nothing in them but lice in here. And convert into a cell. Well, it's a poorly scratched out message. You barely make out the words North Wall. I don't know what this means. I've never known what this means. I don't think it's meant to mean anything. Let's get the heck out of here. Temple of Bane is to the uh, west, I think. There it is. Okay. In front of the entrance to the large shadowy temple, an old blind decrepit orc stands outside with eight orc guards as you approach. They move, allowing you to entrance into the temple. Use an altar that is smeared with blood and covered with crude black handprints. What will you do? Destroy it. As you destroy the altar, the temple doors fly open, screaming horde of horrors. That's why a half-orc cleric attack. Blah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Um. Use the one of magic missiles. You too. I don't know if the range is good on this. You have to take out the spellcaster before you cast whole person. Not gonna do nine damage. Oh, it did ten! Yeah! Why are we missing? All those org leaders is kind of tough. They're gonna shoot a lot of arrows at us. The regular orgs won't be that big a problem. I don't think the org leaders are impossible. We should we should win this. The only question was how many people was Mace, the half orc cleric, going to cast hold person successfully upon? On how many will he successfully cast hold person? To say that grammatically correct. And the answer to that question was zero. I really don't care if Durton goes down. I'm surprised he took something out. Go Durton, go Durton, go. Ooh, Durton's getting shot up. Okay, it's our turn. Oops. I went the wrong way. Hit the wrong baton. making progress we're doing the thing it's working out I'm just thinking about other things I've done as a DM I think are fun and uh, one of them is um, humanizing characters who otherwise would just be you know nameless minions uh, for instance when a player character puts down like some lowly orc or whatever reduces them to zero hit points for the second time or something and they and they go down and having a, one of a one of the other orcs cry out their name I'm like no <laughs> no steve 
Daniel, I will avenge you. Uh, one thing I did do was I, uh, a party finds a group of bandits sleeping, and they successfully sneak in and kill them while they sleep. They start going through their belongings. They find, like, unsent letters to their families or um, little, like, drawings, sketches they made in their own time. Um... I don't know. Little things like that. Uh, Nowhere Man 1217 was talking earlier about um, Raging Swan Press. Raging Swan Press publishes a lot of tables upon which you can roll or little things like little things like that. Like 20 things you'll, you'd find in a bandit's knapsack or something. And just for flavor, you can really quickly roll on a d20 and look on the table and be like yeah, you find, you know, uh, 14 copper pieces, two silver pieces, and you roll, and then you go, and, uh, and a wooden figurine of a, of a bear. It's been whittled, or it's something that's in the process of being whittled and it wasn't finished. Um, and it doesn't have to be that frivolous. I, like, I just, I offhandedly did it like it was something frivolous. Just like a little flavor on top. Um, the point of it is not to have like a thing to roll. Point is you want the players to feel like they're in a real world. And in a real world, nobody is nameless to themselves. You know what I mean? Like you can cut through dozens of orcs like we are in this game right now. Each one is an individual person. And the more you can flesh that out without minimal effort, you know, um, Raging Swan Press definitely makes it, takes the effort of doing that off you. Um, the more you can immerse your players, the better your game will be. And that's kind of the bottom line. And that's a very low weight thing to do. I think. So every now and then plant these little pieces of evidence that certain just went down. That uh, people in your world are people. And they have their own stories. Little bandage. We, won't, we don't want them to die, but I don't care if he goes down. Cool. Didn't get hit. Uh, immediately after this fight, he leaves the party anyway. Because he has to stay here and cleanse the temple. So we're done with Durton. Thankfully. Mercifully. Ow! How easily you get surrounded in the Temple of Bain, though. I don't remember if they surrender or surrender. I actually have to defeat every single one of them individually. Ouch, ouch. Hmm. Gotta hit the orcs. AC6, man. It's not a great armor class. In any edition of D&D, &D, <laughs> as far as I know. I haven't played every edition of D&D. &D. 
I've never played 4th edition. So Matthew Colville, who we've mentioned on the stream today, is currently running a game on Twitch. Uh, he's not live now, I don't think. Actually, let me check. No, not now. He's, he's on the West Coast anyway. It's still, what, like 10 in the morning for him? Um... He does run a fourth edition game. That looks like fun. He has a bunch of YouTube videos with those sessions on it. Called Dusk, I believe. The name of the campaign. And it's a homebrewed campaign, I'm pretty sure. Actually, don't quote me on that. I don't actually know. I haven't watched enough of it to be able to determine that. He had a 5th edition campaign for a brief moment called The Chain of Acheron. They had a pretty decent production value, actually. MCDM, they do things very well. Um... But that ended early. I don't think they finished that camp. Maybe they finished that campaign. There was a controversy on that one. There was a player character death that didn't sit well with people. And then I think they just lost interest or decided it was better to... <clears throat> Excuse me. Put a pin in it. All the people involved are still working for MCDM, as far as I know. On Dead Body of the Half War Cleric, you find a piece of paper, you put the blah, blah, blah. Turn for 25. Great. Certainly is the party. There are hidden trapdoors with stuff in them. Three of them. Here's the first one open trapdoor. Party receives treasure. Take, 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 take. Dust of Disappearance is the thing you need to beat this game. Not required, but it sure is helpful. One right here. Open. Scrolls. I'm going to leave the scrolls. And there's one, I think, right here. Ow, ow, ow. Where is it? Not over here, is it? No. I forget where it is. Crap, where is it? I'm literally going over every inch of this place. Maybe we we're just bad at finding things because we don't have a thief in the party. One more trapdoor, and I'm gonna find it. Oh, you're here. There we go. Forgot where it was. I'm sorry. <sighs> yep. Silva. And St. Peter. Tick, 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 tick. Great. Let's rest up. See the game, head back to town, collect our reward for clearing the Temple of Bane in the wealthy area, and then we go to the graveyard. Find the skull piles, Bean Boy VP. I think uh, we're going to... Um, before we really get into the graveyard, take a, another break. Get a refill on water and things like that. <clears throat> but I am feeling okay. We might be able to uh, finish the game today. Go 
Joel Koval Mansion. Cool. Leave. Oh, and for sure people can uh, level up. Yep. Rhonda, can you level up? You need 500 more experience points. See how many experience points we get from Town Hall. Clear the area next to the Evil Temple. Here's your reward. 249. Need another 251. Ish. Nine, nine, three. Leave the gold. Keep all the fun. Keep all you found in the Temple of Bane as a reward. Crap. The Rhonda cannot level up quite yet, but everyone else can. You know what? I can't. You go in the wilderness and just do one random encounter. Yes, you can. Let's get all the stuff identified. We don't need that anymore. ID, extra healing, great. Bring a feather falling, cool. Looks like a mace plus one, sell. Giant strength, cool. Pushing a healing. Sure, we don't really need this. Hey, Sin, you got anything? Yes, you do. Pushing a speed. Wand of magic missiles. Dust of disappearance. Oh, we haven't done the manual bodily health. I keep freaking forgetting. Gotta do it now. Got to. We just got to. Oh, we did have a shield. Yeah, we'll drop that. We don't need that anymore. No more NPCs. Hand axe, dagger, hammer, mace, morning star. Okay, all that's crap. Scimitar, ear, short sword, cell, cell. Drop 800, share everything, view items, already has a wand of magic missiles, let's give that to St. Pierre. Right, yep. Oh, St. Pierre's already got a wand of magic missiles, so we'll give this one to Silva. Don't know if Silva's ever going to use it. Don't need the shield anymore. Drop about 500. Everyone share. So though, your movement's only six still. I am going to level up everybody but Rhonda for now. I'm going to do a uh, random encounter out in the wilderness. Oh, not enough experience for St. Pierre either. Oh, needs like 223 XP. Why can't St. Pierre level up anymore? St. Pierre's only level five. I don't understand. Is it because St. Pierre's a halfling? I don't understand why St. Pierre can't level up. But I keep saying not enough experience. When he clearly has enough experience, not just for level six, but for level seven. He's capped at level five. 
if that's true, that's really a bummer. All right, we're going to do the uh, manual bodily health. I was going to give it to Tyson, but if St. Pierre cannot level up anymore. Hmm. I'm going to get, I'm going to let Tyson do it. I'm going to stick to the plan. Ready. Use is reading. Rest for over 30 days. Starts to train. Um, Tyson's constitution will go from 19 to 20. Great. Then we'll train Rhonda. If they'll let us train her, she's a gnome. Constitution still not 20. I think we do actually have to like move on the world map, which is freaking weird, but. Let's go and do that. There are a bunch of caves and stuff we can explore as well. Come fight me. Fight a group of cobalts. I don't want to fight cobalts. Me driders or oh, that just said Tyson is hardier. Here we go. Constitution twenty. There she blows. We did it. I don't remember where on the map all these caves are. I don't want to fight cobalts. Give me something meaty. This place or beast. Perfect. Perfect. There's he's a number of them. Displacer beasts are like a D and D staple. D and D original monster. They can turn invisible. This game, I think they just gave him a really good armor class. Really good. It's two, which is decent. Or the scale is ten being the worst and negative ten being the best. The lower the better. Oh, we're biting into him. Ow! Son of a bitch. Yeah, everybody gets a second attack. Look at that. If you kill something, you have to attack something else at this level. Like that. Oops, uh, Tyson's using his hands. I'm hardier. Hey, uh. He just multi classes as a monk. <laughs> 475, that should do it. See that it's partially healed. Tyson's partially healed. Look, he heals on his own. His constitution is so good. He just healed himself for full, back to full health. It's amazing. <laughs> I 
I mean, it takes a day to move a hex on that map. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Rhonda should be able to level up. And if she can't, then I don't know what the heck. Leos is finally setting all my, uh, settling all my cons to share my manga. Good. That'd be awesome. Can't wait to read it. We only fight is here. Do you want to train? Yeah. Rhonda. Son of a bitch. You're nervous? Nervous, excited, nervous, or nervous just in general? That really makes me mad that gnomes and halflings can't become level seven fighters. More you know. Nervous, excited? Yeah. Okay, it's graveyard time. Fate, delete. The more you know, yeah. The more you know. Enter the graveyard. Fierce gusts of wind howl past on the ground, shakes as peals of thunder rock the land. Swirling murk hides what lies ahead. So an explosion of lightning reveals the nightmare scene of a graveyard turned upside down. Are right, we're doing the graveyard, which is my favorite. This is my favorite. It's not fun fighting the skeletons at first. It's kind of tedious, but... Claws rise up from the soil and attempt to drag you down. We also don't have a cleric. Who can turn and kill them. Two damage. I think they do make them resistant to uh, bladed weapons. It really freaking pisses me off. There's no running away or surrendering for undead either. Their sole purpose for existence is to destroy anything that isn't undead. You should use the flail against skeletons. We dropped the flail. Never mind. Straight up dropped it. You switch. Plus three against undead. Oh. Well, only feel showed up for the fight. So did Ali. So did Tyson. Silva's still taking a nap. Rhonda, come on. Ah! 
This fights with the, the fights with the skeletons are a little tedious. Fights with the zombies go a little better. I think if we're all fighters. And by better I mean faster. Now a fight with all clerics is over already. <laughs> So have like five or six people in the party turn undead and just destroy undead rather turning undead means you show your holy symbol and it makes the undead f afraid of you and they run away you turn them away from you you get to a certain level that same holy symbol the shining light coming from the holy symbol can destroy weaker undead the higher the level you are, the more undead you can kill by showing your holy symbol to them. Owie! Ouch. All right, only a small handful of them left. comes Mr. Bill's dog. Did it. No, I do not want to continue. No loot. Oh, crap. You have managed to sneak up some undead. On some skeletons. Combat. There aren't too many random encounters, thankfully. Most of what you find is a set, a set piece, a set encounter. But there are the, an occasional wandering monster encounter to go through. And this would appear to be one of them. I've been streaming for about four hours, give or take. It means the total gameplay time is approaching 10 hours. And we just started the graveyard. We have the graveyard and the castle left. We've done every other quest. Every other main quest. We haven't explored caves in the wild or whatever. And we're not going to in this playthrough. Um... Well, there is more to this game, but we're going to focus on the story and we're going to be able to finish it today, probably. My voice is feeling good. Still relatively early in the day for me. It's about two, two o'clock, almost approaching two o'clock where I am in the afternoon. That is hour 14. I got a hard stop at seven. 
in about five hours. It will not take us five hours to finish this game. Cool. Amazing. We did it. Moving onward. Uh, yeah, this is the un skeleton army, right? Anka is guarded by a skeleton army. Fantastic. I just, I just spit everywhere. <laughs> I apologize if you saw that. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I went fantastic and a bunch of spittle just came forth. So gross. I apologize profusely. I might make an emote of that. Spittle. <laughs> I don't know when you would ever use that. What context ever call for that? I do have plans to make more emotes, by the way. They're they're coming. As time goes on, I get to unlock more and more of them. Right, people are using them. Uh, I do need a tier three emote. I wish I I don't know how to set it so I don't have tiers in my subscriptions. I would rather just have a tier one be the subscription for everybody. Give, just give everybody access to the same stuff. You find a giant skeleton then as retainers. Unbelievable. Know what I mean? I mean, if you're gonna pay money to watch me play video games and act like an idiot, you might as well have access to all the emotes, right? Shouldn't have to subscribe at tier two or three to unlock more things. That's just my feeling. And like four ninety nine a month is a decent amount of money to give to someone. That said, you guys do need more rewards for being followers of the channel. I'm aware of it and I'm working on it. It's just when I want to sit down and like work a complete day, I I feel better um, doing things like editing a video or uh, making sure a game to stream is running okay on my computer. Content, content focused stuff. Been spending, you know, 10 hours on Photoshop, looking at images of my dumb face. <laughs> Me too. Lower Man 1217 says, a giant skeleton and its retainers makes me think of a huge skeleton wearing braces for your teeth. Yeah, those, it's the Invisalign monster. 
The clear aligner straightening demon. Might be a monster, but his smile is immaculate. You know how, like, 9 out of 10 dentists recommend Crest and all that stuff? He's the 10th dentist. It was just a curmudgeon. <laughs> Speaking of dental stuff, during my short little break, I grabbed a handful of grape tomatoes as like a little snack to recharge me, and they hella got stuck in my teeth. He recommends eating fleshy living. <laughs> Find a marble chest. You open it? Uh, yeah. The hell do you think this is? Amateur hour? We can't use those scrolls. They're all scrolls of restoration. That Tyson is partially healed just from walking around. Constitution score is 20. He's fully healed. Boom. Skeletons silently attack. This is a set encounter. See how few of them there are? <laughs> Ow! Which part of him healed? His heart. Don't break my heart, my achy broken heart. A coccyx. Pretty important bone to have healed. Small army of skeletons rushes from the tower. And then promptly poop themselves. Oh, <laughs> I just imagined a skeleton pooping itself. You see it, like, move through the intestine. And... Welcome to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody, where we talk about poop. <laughs> the, the first Kickstarter our channel's going to have is to rewrite the monster manual as an everybody poops book. And it's just a monster manual full, filled with, with monsters pooping. <laughs> This is a beholder. This is a beholder pooping. <laughs> this graveyard feels like it's somehow the inspiration for Army of Darkness. God, I hope it is. I seriously hope Sam Raimi was like playing Pool of Radiance one day and just said, I want to turn this into a freaking movie. If only I befriended the world's greatest actor. Oh, wait a minute. I did. Bruce Campbell is the closest thing we have to a national treasure. Screw Tom Hanks. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> uh, I don't really like James Corden. But on his show, his talk show, um, he had John Hamm as a guest. And they played this game that J James Corden has played with several celebrities. Called... Uh, Fill your guts or spill your guts. There's an Evil Dead video game releasing soon. 
Really? Groovy. We're gonna stream it. <laughs> For sure. Um... Fill your guts or spill your guts? I don't know if you've seen this, but... Uh, one person reads a really personal question to the other, and they have to choose to either answer it um, or eat some ridiculous food that's been put in front of them. Uh, it's questions like... Um, I forget. I'm trying to think of a specific example. Usually stuff like... Uh, rate your, your bandmates from most talented to least talented or something like that. It's like something that would be damaging to their character if they were to answer it honestly. Um, for some reason, the only the only thing I can remember is James Corden asked Steven Tyler approximately how much money have you spent on drugs in your lifetime? Steven Tyler answered it. He said about $2 million. John Hamm was on. John Hamm asked James Corden a question, which was, what guest have you had on the show who you'd never want to invite back? And John, and everyone goes, ooh. John Hamm goes, now you could say Tom Hanks, we'll all get it. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. All right, Spectre. Your cousin in the library certainly gave us some trouble. Are you going to give us trouble? No, no, you're not going to give us any trouble. Smile, you son of a bitch. Got him. 2200 experience. Oh, look at all that platinum. Platinum, platinum. Yeah, yeah. Groovy. Continuing onwards. Uh, so that's the skeleton part. Now we gotta do the zombie part. Man, just sneak on some, on some zombies. Great. Yep, this is going a lot faster. <laughs> God, plowing through these guys. You bet the monster manual will be successful. <laughs> everybody, everybody poops the monster manual. Everybody poots. Colon. Monster manual. Not everybody poops out a monster manual. Everybody poops a monster manual. There's a... There's a colon in the way. There's a colon in the way I'm not pooping the monster manual. The fuck? What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> That would be a hilarious Kickstarter, though. It has actual stat blocks. It has actual intestinal blocks. <laughs> zombie, shuffle down the stairs. Zombie, zombie. Zombie. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, 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 oh. All right, I'm starting to lose my mind. This is why I only stream for four hours at a time, usually. Starting to get loopy. I have also consumed enough coffee to see 30 seconds into the future.
This is fun. This game is fun. I really like the graveyard too. You know, sometimes this game's a little tedious with like how much combat there, how much repetitive combat there is. Uh, but I can't lie. I, I mean, I've been playing this game my whole life. I can't not play it. I just can't not play it. Ow. New magic item right there. Coffee mug of foresight. <laughs> Grave is my favorite D&D thing of all time. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, I put a graveyard in my homebrewed campaign and it was heavily inspired by this. It was actually more like this. You know, you start with skeletons and zombies, then you move on to whites and ghouls, then you move on to specters and vampire mummies. You know, the vampire being the boss sort of thing. We are kicking the absolute shit out of these zombies. They don't got a freaking chance. Juju, a zombie with gray, leathery, hard skin, gazes at you with hate-filled eyes. I mentioned this on stream before. There's a juju zombie. Juju zombies are different than zombies. Insofar as zombies are mindless creatures, right? It just wants to eat brains and stuff. The very, you know, the, the typical trope, right? We know the zombie. We've all seen Night of the Living Dead. And uh, we've all read World War Z and everything. Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> They're mindless. Juju zombies aren't. Juju zombies are sentient. Juju zombies are aware that they've been turned into zombies. And they're very unhappy about it. That's why juju zombies are filled with hate. That's horrifying. Actually, that reminds me of a video game. It was a first-person shooter, and I don't usually play first-person shooters, so I apologize if I don't remember the title. But maybe someone out there who's much more um, aligned with that that subgenre of video game, action game. Uh, I guess it's it's its own genre now. Uh, would know the answer to as to which video game this actually was, but you fight zombies in it. And they make weird noises at you. Vocal noises. That sounds like gibberish, like they're just snarling. Various objects are scattered about, we pick them up? Yes. Racking up the experience. Dick, dick. Um, were you to play it backwards, however, it turns out that the sounds they're making are words in English. And it's the people screaming for help because they're aware they've been turned into zombies. That's kind of creepy, right? All right, there are mummies in here. Mummies frighten you. When you're frightened, you become helpless. Ricky Three Witch, what's going on, my friend? Welcome to the chat. And when you're helpless, one hit takes you down. So this might take us a few tries. Ricky Three Witch, you're just in time. Slow ominous creaks, the mummies open their sarcophagi. And lightning shoots into their chest? I don't understand. Son of a bitch. See, just like that. Not permanent. Oh. Tyson got diseased. They also disease you. Which means Tyson cannot regain hit points until the disease is cured. 
And I'm fine with that. Because we don't really have a way for, to heal him anyway. We'll have to go to a temple and get him cured. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is maybe the hardest fight in the game, the paralyzation disease. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. I still maintain that the hardest fight in the game is the series of three fights you have to do in the Cobalt Caves. Rhonda's diseased. Everyone got to have the sickness. So everyone seems to need the cure. Somebody hit something. Thank you. So Tyson and Rhonda need to go to a temple. But no one went down. I'll take it. Oh, Tyson's partially healed. Look at that. His constitution's so good. Even when diseased. Wait, is it not Tyson? Uh, it's not coming up, it's diseased. All right. I'm pretty sure it's Tyson. He's partially healing himself, though. Managed to sneak up on some whites. That's good, because whites drain levels. We, they... No, you have to hit them. Sometimes there are mummies in this fight. Actually, Dungard. Fools! Got him. Fools can paralyze you. And the paralyzation is permanent. <laughs> <laughs> carries over to the next fight. You stay on your feet, so we don't want to be paralyzed. It's permanent until you get knocked unconscious or until somebody spells magic on you or something? I don't remember. How to get rid of it. I figured three witches on his lunch break. Yeah, I figured. If anybody's watching this while working, just make sure you prioritize work. I definitely would not want you to be distracted in any way by this. So by all means, chat if you are able to do so. But if you're unable to do so, you can just lurk. We don't mind lurkers here. We don't encourage anybody to chat who doesn't want to speak. Just hang out. Have a good time. This channel is called Kelvin's Coin because Kelvin's Coin itself doesn't serve any function. It's just in your inventory. It sits in the background doing nothing. Ah! Didn't get paralyzed, though. That's good. Oh, yeah. This feels right. Yep. We did it. Uh, I think there are three groups of whites we have to fight. Dark bent creatures rush swiftly at you. Um, this is what we want to do. <laughs> work is overrated. Ricky Three Words says, "Fuck work, fuck school, let's rage." <laughs> <laughs> 
One of the best tour names I ever went to. <laughs> Who was on that tour? He's got a bunch of magic missiles. He got them all. Knows how to use it. Sweet. Excellent. Okay, we can put the magic arrows away now. Don't need to use the one of magic missiles either. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we'll fire some non magic arrows. You need magic arrows to. You need magic weapons to be able to hurt a white. You need a magic weapon to be able to hit a ghoul. Pretty sure. Plus one weapon. Got the song Cure stuck in, stuck in your head? Sorry. Everyone's got to have the sickness. Oh, we can get by that way. Sure, I want them using their guard attacks against the character with the highest or the best AC lowest AC lowest is best they game fire Prepare, take aim, fire. Oh, missed. That tour was Unearth, a mirror, impending doom, and born of Osiris. And Unearth's been around for forever. Are they still touring? Wait. Wait, the there wasn't somebody in Unearth who they're still at it. Okay, good. Ugh. Quoted a few songs in a conversational way today. She's got a wand. She knows how to use it. It's easy top. Is that a juju? They're jujus. Ju -ju 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 -ju. That was wham. Killed them all. Destroyed them. Find some undead. Great. I'm hoping this is the last white fight. Because mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't want to lose my levels. No, 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 no. There we go. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Nuts. 
All right. Uh. Yeah. Really glad we leveled up everybody we could before we came here. That second attack is certainly handy. TV battle. Nope. Whites appear from around the tower. Crap. So one of those was just a random encounter. That sucks. Oh yeah, this is definitely a set set piece. Running low. Running low on arrows. No! Shit! St. Pierre's just drained a level. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta load the game. I can't with this. I should have saved it right before that fight. Did I save it? Anyway, remember? I'd be really upset if I didn't I have to do all those fights again. We can get restored at a temple. But we lose all that experience, and I'm afraid the game will glitch because it's not letting our halfling or our gnome gain any more levels. I'm a little bit worried that it's a permanent level drain. Find some undead. Okay, do it. You cannot miss. Cannot miss. Won't allow it. God damn it, St. Pierre. Yeah, they got capped because of race. Yeah, that's what I, f that's what I figured was happening. It sucks because the halfling is capped at level five. When most fighters can go to level eight. And the gnome is uh, capped at level six. Everyone else is level seven, though. Managed to sneak up on some whites. So let's kill them. Hmm. You cannot miss. Well, they sure are missing. Son of a bitch. <laughs> and when you get restored, it it does not restore your experience points. It only restores experience points up to that level. So any progress you've made towards the next one is lost. I'm telling you right now. I'm not about that life. The graveyard is where you earn the most experience. We've already earned a lot of it. I will hold on to it. Oof. My hands are hurting. don't have magic arrows but you have a better armor class than St. Pierre why don't you get in there juju 
Ooh. You don't have magic arrows, but you have a wand of magic missiles. Okay, they all missed this round. Good. Excellent. Wait, there's a third one. Has he gone yet? Would appear he has. Getting through it. I mentioned on stream last night. Um, while I was streaming, I was I had a video of mine running, one that wasn't published yet. Uh, it's tonight's inscription episode. And I looked over at one point and I realized that I had forgotten to edit out a part where I was just like flipping through the, uh, the rule book that's part of the game. Trying to find what, uh, what couldn't it be meant. Looking up that game mechanic. And it's all the way at the back, so I was just like flipping through. It's like this, it's just like 15 seconds of dead air. And last night on stream, I, saw, I looked over and I saw it on my laptop. And I was like, uh, oh, I forgot to edit something out. I'm not going to fix it, though. Ho, ho, ho. I, I fixed it. <laughs> I ended the stream early and I was like, I have time. What's a good way to use it? If I'm not streaming. What am I going to do tonight? They so re-edited that video. It'll be coming out in two and a half hours, roughly. I have it scheduled to publish five Eastern time. Show me your jujus. <laughs> Where are your jujus? I need jujus. He's losing his mind. I'm reaping all of the benefits. Jujus! Found him. Juju zombies are immune to magic, I believe. Juge. 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 Got him. Oh, man. You could have been so badass and finished them all off, but... All right. We did it. Uh, yes, I do. Take. I don't think that's a magic short bow. I think it's a non-magical short bow. Sometimes whites carry bows. Managed to sneak up on some whites. All right. God, there's a mummy here. I don't like it. Shit, shit, shit. But I like the whites even less. Actually, use the, uh, Wanda magic missiles. Wanda magic missiles. Ugh. Hello. You 
pretty sure to mum with normal arrows, right? Well, he missed, so maybe not. He missed. I missed. Don I miss? Somebody hit that guy. Use Mommy. Yep, zero damage. Good to know. Uh, let's save our arrows. Is there no one else? All right. Cool, save the game. We'll do the fight with a bunch of whites a few times. I'm sure. Because this is not an easy fight without any clerics or magic users. Crap. This is difficult to do without losing any levels, I mean. Look out! Okay. Alright. Come on, you stupid idiots. Oh. Hey, stay right there. No! Look out! Oh, God. I don't know how many arrows I have left. Four! Okay. Mm, one of the missed. Most unfortunate. Well, look out! No! 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 Oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Got one arrow left. <laughs> Can I move and then uh, shoot it? Look out! Oh, missed him and then he healed. <laughs> Tyson healed himself. All right, I can't friggin' believe we got through that, but we did. Got one plus one arrow left. Beat. Our chamber is filled with glass and fur objects of all types. A sharp crack splits the air and you're stung. No one took any damage, though. Hello, Mr. Spectre. Summoning a white. Oh, we gotta hit him. You have to hit him. This should do it. Got him.
Mm. We don't need that much money. Not at the cost of our movement. We'll take 200. Should have just left it. Ended up ended up leaving more platinum behind than we than we took. Which is fine. We don't actually need that much money. Alright, so there's the crypt where the uh the vampire goes, and this is we fight two specters here, I believe. This could be interesting. Shadowy foreign slow from between the doors and attack. Rhonda. Put your shield on. We're getting our money's worth. Well, we didn't pay for these, but certainly getting some mileage out of these wands of magic missile we have found along the way. This is the time to be using them. Although I suppose any time is a good time to use a wand of magic missiles. Okay, he missed. That was the only chance he had. Go to the top of the tower. Voice speaks. Come, my brave adventurers. You must take my gifts to better fight the evil that has come to the city. Hell yeah. Ruby. Okay, I believe all that is left is the vampire. Am I wrong? And that wizard who offers to join our party. Inside the ruins of a black marble crypt is a coffin filled with dust. Among the piles of dust are several broken crosses, vials of spilled holy water, and a scroll. You read the scroll? Yes. Place your journal's journal entry 43. You want to do anything with coffin? Yes. We want to destroy it. Overturn. Coffin makes a mess on the floor. <laughs> Here we go. Wooden stairs lead into a pit to go down. Yes. Chamber lights up to reveal a tall, pale man with very white teeth. Freak, where are you? There you are, bud. There you are, bud. We're going to use this. Focus fire on the vampy. Oh no, he needs a plus two weapon to hit it. That's not good. What are you doing attacking the wolf? Hey, unaffected. <laughs> Jerk. Son of a bitch. Oh, I was punching him. That's why. I had the wand out. Uh, my bad. <laughs> That's why he didn't do any damage. Nope, we good. That short bow is not magical. I don't think. Vampire turns into a vapor cloud and floats away. Find the vampire's treasure trove. Do you take it? Yes. Of course we take it. Silva. Nope. Tyson's fully healed. All right. There's a vampire here. 
Yeah. Little plus four at long sword. How'd you miss him? There we go. Any battle? Nope. We did it, guys. We beat the graveyard. Last thing left is just to run into this stupid idiot wizard. Kick his bum. And we'll go home. I remember where you find him. Sometimes you don't run into him. All right, I didn't run into him. Oh, well. That's fine. Let's just get out of here. Leave. Take a boot. I'm afraid of resting while someone is diseased. Tyson and Ronda are diseased. We're going to a temple. Priest of the Tempest, bid you welcome. Do you seek healing? Yes. Um, Tyson, heal. Cure disease. Cost you a thousand gold pieces. Paid for cure? Yes. Tyson is cured. Rhonda. Heal. Rhonda is cured. Cool. Oh. Thousand gold pieces, huh? Let's stay in this inn. Yep. Now we can rest up. Oh boy. Oh, that's everyone. Yep. <clears throat> Let's click. Uh... <laughs> I say, Let's collect a reward, but it's nighttime. We can't get into any building. Good thing we have so much platinum. It's inconsequential. I think we get a lot of experience from this. 4,600. Special prize ending the graveyard menace. Yeah. Yeah, so we get like 14, 1500 experience. Pretty cool. All right. The only thing left is the castle. Remember, there's an outer castle and an inner one. Oh, no one can gain levels. 125,000 we're looking for. Wow, okay. Even with all that experience. <laughs> Lady, push the healing. Great. Lady, one lightning bolt, can't use it. Yep, non magical bow. We can't use these wands of lightning bolt. I'll hold on to them just in case. Hell yeah, plate meal plus two. Back to work you go. Ricky Three Witch, thank you so much for hanging with us in the chat. Really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day at work. I hope the rest is uh, stress-free and enjoyable. We'll be streaming again tomorrow night. Going back to Heroes of Might Magic 2. Uh, I don't think Holyfield has. Magical armor. 
I don't know, I was wearing plate mail post too. Shield plus one. Bring a fire resistance, throw that on. Silva. I don't remember what Silva has. Silva's got plate armor. Not magical. Shield plus one, already has one of those. His weapon was the broadsword. Plus one, we'll sell that. Those broadswords plus one stick with you for a long time. Long, long time. Oh, you know what? I don't think Rhonda has a magic weapon. I should have given her the, uh, given her the broadsword. That was stupid. Hands are full, right. Now, Rhonda's got a plus one longsword. That's good. Plus one broadsword is superior. Everybody's got a magical shield, so sell this. Get out of here. We're skedaddling. Like how the City Watch eyes you suspiciously every time you try to go into the slums. Like we aren't the heroes who are doing their job for them. Put search on just in case who does well isn't completely clear of monsters. We don't get surprised. You know, Potal Plaza is never really free of monsters. Eight should be good though. All right, here we go. I don't remember if the entrance is there or here. I think it might be here. It is. Ba Boom. Oh, we're in the wrong spot. I think I want to be down here. Yep, there we go. We're in search on. Because we want to go into this building. Enter a building where women are washing clothes. As you come in, they retreat to the corner, looking fearfully at you. Hear one of them whisper. They don't belong here. They must have come to kill Tyrant Thraxis. Half-orc woman steps forward. What do you want of us? We'll be nice. The woman says, Tyrant Thraxis is leading our men to their deaths. If you intend to kill him, we will help. Use these clothes as a disguise and you will escape notice. So you use the clothing as a disguise? Sure. Well, then good luck. Best you leave before you are found here. We will keep silence. Uh, leave. Because now longsword is better. Broadsword is 2d4 versus longsword 1d8. That's against medium and small creatures. Longsword does d12 against large. Broadsword only does 1d6 plus 1. Big longsword. I forgot that it does different damage versus large creatures. But, um, I would take 2d4 over 1d8. Because the max 2d4 is 2. I mean, the minimum. The minimum amount of damage would be two as opposed to one with 1d8. I do, I did forget that they deal different damage against different sizes of creature in this edition of D&D. &D. Yeah, most of these buildings are empty. You're in a smithy. Smith, a human, and three fire giants are working on a suit of armor. Piled up out of the way are an assortment of weapons and armor. Myth ignores you as it hammers on a grieve. What do you need? Smith wipes his brow and says, No, you never get totally used to the heave. It's not that bad. Now leave me alone. Store room full of coal. Don't think there's anything down here. 
and a standard meat smokehouse. Maybe not quite standard. You feel a little sick as you look at the meat. Smelling the smoke don't help either. And a building that was once a barracks but has now been converted to a Temple of Bane. Reason two acolytes turn from the altar. Whoa, hey. Uh, except the blessing of Lord Bane. I. You guys are clerics, right? Level five, level one. I don't want them casting any spells. I think all of these items are oh there's the necklace of fireballs all these items might be cursed before the altar Near it is the offering box with some change in it. Do you take it? No. Behind the altar, two cross swords. Do you take them? No. The swords are definitely cursed. But more importantly, if you steal anything from the temple, all the guards attack you. Your disguise doesn't really work anymore. Uh, so now we're in the northwest part of the castle. There's an entrance to the inner part here, but we're going to finish the exterior. The building is empty. There's a dude in this building, right? Nope. Alright, there's one entrance. As you enter the room, you see some sleeping giants. Attack as they sleep. Speak toward them, loose aboard. Blah, 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 blah. Toward them, a loose board creaks. The giants get to their feet, shaking the sleep from their eyes. I just want to see how well we do or not against fire giants. Because this is a nice, easy encounter as far as fighting fire giants goes. They deal incredible amounts of damage. Looks like we're not really hitting them very consistently. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Fighting fire giants will not be easy. I'm also not really looking forward to uh, that part of the tower that's filled with trolls. We're going to do it. The trains, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Breaking the door into a well-fitted well -fitted apartment, two giants come lumbering up to you. We're going to face them. Giants stand in front of you looking suspicious. Parlay. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Abusive. Oh, okay. And with that, they leave. That's funny. That always makes me laugh. Oh, okay. Fighter emerges from the building nearby and confronts you. What are you doing here? Parlay. What are you doing here? Repeats. Abusive. Sorry, sir. There's an alert. On whose authority are you here? Tyrant Thraxis. Not of the head. You're left alone. Bye. In a hall with a long tables, benches, and a great heart at one end. In the corners are heaps of garbage being picked over by some rats. Flee at your entrance. I don't think there's anything here. It's daytime again. You know what that means? I don't know. Big old castle that's mostly empty. Uh, is this the one with giant snakes in it? Oops. No, it's empty. Fight emerges from the corner. Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing here? Pyranthraxes. Lot of the head, you're left alone. Bye. Say hi to Paul Simon for me. Into a room that more resembles a pigsty than the barracks it is. In the room are four giants. Giants look up at you. Uh. What are you doing here? Go ahead, threaten us. Tear our carts, cut off our heads, slice open our bellies. Uh, we might not do well in this fight. <laughs> we'll see.
They're having trouble hitting us. That's encouraging. Oh, there we go. Holy Field just got sandblasted. Ooh. Oh yeah, they're hurting us. Just wailing on each other. This, this is what I was envisioning the entire time. Party of all fighters doing this. Just giants and fighters just freaking wailing on each other. No holds barred. Just freaking meh. That was fun. We win. Uh, we're going to rest to get our hit points back up. Okay. Streaming for over five hours now. Bring our total playing time to over 10. I really thought I could beat this game in something like, I don't know. Six or seven hours, but apparently not. Longer game than I thought it was. Bash. Entered an army inside as a large serpent of armor and weapons. Do you want to take anything? No. It's just all the mundane items that you can buy at a shop. And it's literally all of them. Into a room that reeks of smoke and burned food. You see three human slaves cooking meat, peeling potatoes, and being beaten by a vicious looking gnoll. What do you do? We can kill the overseer and free the slaves, go back outside, or talk to the overseer. We're gonna kill the slaver. The overseer. Noel turns to flee as he runs by. One of the slaves trips him. Advance and cut the overseer's throat. Two of the slaves run quickly out the door. The third approaches you with tears of gratitude in his eyes. I thank you for freeing me. Before I leave, let me help you as best I can. He takes a slip of paper from the pouch of the dead Noel. Here, you will need this. Look at the writing. Rodia. That's the... That's today's password at the main gate into the hedge maze. Lassa, can I help you with that? For I have not been inside. But I've heard the maze is deadly. He's right. It is. The maze can literally kill you. In a building full of records. Do you wish to spend hours reading the records? Yep. Find evidence that the Red Wizards of Thay are allied to Tyrant Thraxis. Finding a pattern to his activities. At first, his followers were an unsophisticated horde of ill-organized unhumans. Now they're much more sinister. The web of corruption he has spread is incredible in its scope. Ultimate goal is to conquer all lands south of the Moon Sea. Find anything more, you will have to spend so much time that you will have to clear the area first. Really? Under building which is filled with tables and writing supplies. Though empty, there are signs that work has been done here recently. Really? The rooms with giants in them have like four gold pieces in them or something like that. It's, it's really silly how little there is. It's not worth searching around. Alright, this one has the... Uh, Giant snakes that can bite and kill us. Hello. You see giant snakes. Okay, all misses. Good news for us. I can't remember if it's giant snake or specifically one that says poisonous snake. They poison you and kill you. Instantly. Nothing in there. The giants are putting on their armor. Uh, are they? Battle begins. Great. Oh, there's a lot of them.
I didn't think I would have this much fun fighting giants with nothing but fighters. But I am. Just toe to toe, just battling. Great. Trying to flee. Stay in that corner. Rondo. No, 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 no. Wow, we kicked the crap out of them. Didn't have a frickin' chance. Find some treasure, take it. And one experience point, 11 gold. I don't know why it's there, but it is. All right, let's see. Small cell chained to the wall is a man beaten to within an inch of his life. As you open the door, he looks up and you feel a shock. The man is Porphyrus Cardorna. Name of Shantua, help me. Please, by all that's merciful, help me. No, we're gonna kill him. Wait, I know to get through the gates. We already know. We're on orders to kill you. Quick stroke, you release him from this pain. So all the pain to come. He's going to heck. Or he is a well filled with water. What is cold to need? Do you want to dive in? Yep. He will dive. Tyson. You the bottom feel around. Find a sword. Do you take it? Yep. Ugh, come on. He's got con high constitution. Man. That's so silly. The giant stand barring your way. What password? Tell password I kill you now. Uh, Rodia? Wrong answer. Uh, alarm starts ringing. Shit, I don't want that to happen. What was the password? Is it just time and access or something? I don't know. Later advances. What are you doing here? I'm trying to sleep, you asshole. Uh, I want that alarm to stop. I already told you. Alarm is sounding. Yep. Is just annoying. I mean, every every step, really, with this. Okay, the alarm stopped. That's good news. We're showing the ceiling caves in. Great, I forgot about that. <laughs> so cheap. Nothing in here. Oh. Giants putting on their armor. Uh, parlay. Cool, the battle begins. Great. Aren't the chatty type of uh, hill giants, I guess, huh? Ouch. Throw a frickin' boulder at me. Ow. Oh, God, they're tooling on a lead. He's tooling back, baby. Let me 
Bunch of little bitch babies out of boulders. Ow. Oh, wow. Still alive, I see you still alive. Funny to, that we have halflings and gnomes, and dwarves chasing giants, and I guess humans and half elves and elves are pretty funny too. Great. I'm gonna rest actually. Holy field took some damage. Pool of Radiance, it's Pool of Radiance. We're almost done, almost done. Nothing in here. Ruby. All right, so we've done the outer. So now we're in the southwest. Let's go to the northwest. Deep voice calls down. What is the password? Give the password. What password do you give? Roll the uh alright then, pass. Alright. Four points of interest in each quadrant of the head of the, the hedge maze. And then there are two on the inner part of the hedge maze that I think are only accessible by the teleporter. Um, you see a harmless middle-aged man. Arlette, wait, I was just a mage searching for knowledge when Tyrant Thrax has captured me. Forced to work for him. Spare me and I will leave. Never to return. Attack him. Give you all my notes. Here they are. Attack him. Everybody who works at Tyrant Thrax is a snake. With cool stuff. Racers ring in a month. Nothing else in this room. Okay. I don't remember how to navigate this place. I always have to do this with some kind of walkthrough or map. All right, south. So now we're in the southwest part. We want to keep heading southwesterly. I don't want to go that way yet. That's a dead end. All right, cool. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, I think I need a. I think I need to pull up a map. This is where we came from. Let me get a map real quick. In the southwest part.
Sorry, everybody. Sorry, everybody. Nope, that's not what I want. Game Banshee has the best walkthrough uh, for this game, in my opinion. They're missing some stuff in the library, a couple of other things. For the most part's good. It's very good, actually. Southwest Quadrant. Okay, we are facing south, so we're right there. We want to... Oh, uh, no, we're not there. We're there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Am I not in the southwest quadrant? <laughs> Confused. We went in from the northwest and we went south. Hang on a second. Um, let's see here. Armless middle aged man. There you go. Okay, yeah, we're right there. And northwest and southeast have the internal points of interest. So southwest quadrant. Yeah. We can get to the southeast quadrant from here. Uh, if we go this way, I mean, Let, let's do it. Let's fight the false tyrant Traxxas. No, that's not where we are. This is not the southeast quadrant. Southwest. I'm looking at the southeast. We're not in the southeastern quadrant. I don't understand. Because we went south. That's right. We're in the southwest quadrant. Yeah, this is where I am. Got it. Okay. So we are going to go to the southeast quadrant. If we go straight, there should be a door. There it is. Southeast Quadrant. But we're going to F up the False Tyrant Thraxis. We're going to do it now. We're going to get that plus five longsword. And it's going to be good. We're going to need it. Okay, so the teleporter for this place is in there. Right there. Through there. And this is where the false tyrant thraxis is. Let's do it. Enter a chamber which is lavishly appointed with hangings, carpets, and furniture, sitting on a throne. Powerful looking man, clad in barbaric splendor. What is the business of Tyrant Thraxis, Lord of Fun? Combat. That's my frickin' business. Couple of six level thieves, don't make me laugh. hell out of these guys. Wow, that wasn't even fair. Got more gauntlets of ogre power, which is great. Actually trade those with Silva, who's overloaded. Great. Give the wand to Rhonda. Uh, 
um, Tyson. That's the plus five long sword. Is it? No. But Elliot has it, right? No. With the plus five longsword to Ali. I was going to make sure it's the plus five longsword. At least they go seven. If we equip that longsword, it should be six. That's nine. That's not the plus five longsword. My bad. I thought it was. Game FAQs is really good walkthrough as well, which also includes the mechanics. Or how things are calculated and the code of the game and stuff. Random counter stake on all kinds of stuff. Oh, gotcha. That's cool. That's the long sword. Silva is stronger. Ruby. Uh, trade that long story with Ali. They go seven. Now it should be six, and it is plus five long sword. Ho! That long sword to Tyson. Yeah, much lower Thaco. Now he needs. Now he needs a shield. <laughs> I don't think anybody has an extra shield. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay. Uh, Nice and put put that shield on, buddy. That plate mill is also really good, but I think we're fine. Nope. Oh crap! An alarm is sounding. Right, giant snakes constantly attack you, and the alarm is sounding. That's so stupid. Hope that alarm goes away. Oh, come on with the alarm. Don't want to have to deal with this. It sucks. The freaking giant snakes and the, the alarm never goes off. It's so, so very, very poopy. damage pretty good all right i'm not gonna if this alarm is sounding i'm not i'm not gonna deal with this let's just go fight tyrant Thraxis. let's end this madness speed run there are items and challenges I, I there's a room full of fire giants room full of trolls we're not gonna have any of it we're just gonna go for the gold I, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to crawl this entire map having to do this fight a billion times. I refuse. All 
All right, so the uh fuck. <laughs> Come on. Confounded giant snakes. Uh-oh. I think my camera just died. I'm going to have to fix that as soon as this as soon as this fight's over. The battery's definitely uh dead in the camera, so I got to back up. That's all good. It's all good. Uh, hang on a second, people. One moment, please, while I change out the battery. It was actually going to uh, change the battery before I started this marathon stream, and I just completely forgot. I might have to uh, go back into OBS to reactivate the camera. We'll see if it reactivates on its own. Oh, this stupid prompt comes up. Okay, we back. I'm going to use the teleporter. Let's go back to the inside of the Northwest Quadrant. Uh, I want to use the teleporter. I want to be... The building should be south. Should be a wall behind us and garden in front of us. Isn't it? Shit, Oxy, stupid giant snakes. Shit on your snake dicks. Great. Another unfulfilling battle. <laughs> zim, 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 zim. Nope. Zim, 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 zim. There we are. No, this is a different... We want to be facing north. Building out our back, facing north. Did it. Friggin' giant snakes. Son of a bastard. Shit. Son of a bitch. You know what? Dungard, come to me, son of a bastard. <laughs> Gotta have fun with it somehow. 
You're gonna do the same fight 11 million times? Oh, I didn't move into an adjacent space, but that's okay. Move forward. Move forward. Great, we made. Ah, oh, come on with the. F oh my god, these snakes. Are they encumbered or yeah, they're encumbered. Movement twelve. Movement three. Carrying an extra set of armor. It's probably what's doing it. We're gonna drop about nine hundred platinum. Hopefully that helps. It does help. Holy field. Okay, Silva. Okay. St. Pierre. Drop about 300. Six, that's okay. Six is all right. Okay, we made it. Iron Thrax's whole illusionary wall. Go upstairs, you wanna go down these stairs? No, you can do to your left, cool. Down here is where the Medusa is. Let's go, let's do it, yep. Room filled with broken statues, a head broken loose from the torso shows a face filled with terror. Medusa comes running towards you. Up, 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 up. Okay. Combat. Got it. Secret door to our right. Let's go. You want to go up these stairs. I think we want to go this way first. Ash. Empty room. The only feature is a trap door in the center. Do you open it? Yep. Quickly looking down, looking away, Ali says, I saw broken remains of statues, heads with faces full of terror. You want to jump through the trap door? No. That's where the Medusa is. I don't think there's anything back here. Yeah, there's nothing back here. Just an empty room. If you open the trap door and look down, the Medusa turns you to stone. <laughs> it's a pretty cheap trap, but hey. What do you want to do? I'm going to kill everyone. You're in a room furnished with chairs and benches. Waiting there is a man playing with a dagger. As you come in, he nods at you. There's moodily at his feet. I'm going to kill him. Everyone working for Tyrant Thrax is a snake and must be killed. You have anything good on him? Nope. Enter room furnished as the apartment of a wealthy, if eccentric, merchant. Middle-aged man in robes looks up from a desk. A look of fear comes over his face. If you come from Tyrant Thrax, I can offer a better deal. To kill him instead of me, I will make you all generals. In fact, I'll join you. Is it a deal? Nope. No deal. We kill you. You need to battle? Nope. All right, last couple fights of the stream. Here we go. First things first. Use the dust of disappearance. You wanna go down these stairs? We do. In the audience hall of Tyrant Thrax's Conqueror of Flan, Ceiling has been torn away, leaving the entire section of the tower open to the sky. Center of the room is a glowing pool. An ancient bronze dragon surrounded by a fiery aura rises from where it is coiled nearby. Two guards move to bar your path. Dragon looks at you with malevolence. Guards kill these pests. Everybody's invisible.
which is super important so we don't get surrounded and everything. They're having trouble hitting us too. They can only target us if we're right next to them. Ow. Ow. These guys have a shit ton of hit points. Had everybody take their own guy. Wonder if it wasn't a better idea to gang up on one. We're gonna gang up. Rhonda! Rhonda's almost down. So, unequip the longsword, and that's it. You don't have any potions. That's cool. Uh, potion of extra healing. There we go. Want to quit the mace? Use this. Use. Rhonda. Oh, you can't heal them because they're invisible. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's so stupid. I'm pretty sure that happened to me last time I streamed this game. Oh, that was the last use of that, too. That's so dumb. Move around this way. Picking them apart. East by. Dust of Disappearance must have for this series of battles. Tyrant Thraxus also has kind of like a legendary action. It's like a reaction attack. Um, that he can't use when you're invisible. He still has a breath weapon that will instantly kill anybody in this party, but at least we got that going for us. Yeah, see, they can only target us if we're standing right next to them. And even then, it's hard for them to hit us. They don't know whether the shit will go blind. So no reaction attacks, uh, opportunity attacks. Any kind of reaction attack at all. Nothing but tooling. I'm gonna put Silva here with the most hit points. Current hit points. Sorry, you take a break.
All Fighter Beat Grinder. Hopefully it'll be okay. This poor guy is surrounded by invisible people. He's getting f absolutely wrecked. Tyrannosaurus wrecked. Alrighty. These are rings of protection plus three, I think. Two and swords plus two. I think it's plate mail plus two as well. Um, everybody take some plate mail if you can. Undoubtedly. Oh, no, it's good. Take one more. Wow, a lot of suits of plate mail on them. Her. Take a ring. Okay. All right, here we go. Dragon looks at you with interest. You're indeed mighty warriors. Even so, there is no hope of your success. But you interest me. Join me, I will make you the commanders of the armies that will sweep the moon sea. Cannot be defeated, you know. Will you join me? It's the you know that really gets you. Ali, how do you vote? Attack. Tyson, how do you vote? Attack. Holy Field, how do you vote? Attack. Silva, attack. St. Pierre, attack. Rhonda, attack. Battle begins. To get away from the walls. Those have a lightning breath attack. Oh shit. Oh, does it feel good getting tooled on Tyrant Thraxis, you bitch? We win. Mortally wounded, the dragon roars. The spear of Tyrant Thraxis flares off from the dragon's body. <laughs> What an animation. Fools, you have but slain the body I possess. It cannot be defeated. With the power of the pool of radiance, which I moved here to my lair, I will still rule by possessing one of you. But a pit opens up and Lord Bane brings him back to hell. That's what happens. I don't know if I'm be able to read it to you. Oh, Lord Bane, I can still rule here. I've not failed. Do not call me back. Nah. Knowing that Tyrant Thraxis has finally been defeated, you leave the castle. Moving through the streets, you catch occasional glimpses of monsters in hiding. None attack. Finally, you enter the civilized area of Flan. We did it, everybody. I didn't completely finish the castle, but I don't care. I wasn't going to go through that with all those snakes. Congratulations, your quest is over. Tyranthrax is defeated. Flan is free. If you wish, you may continue to help us clear any remaining monsters. All Flan salutes you. Here's your reward. 45,000 experience. Okay. That's pretty good. Now we'll see who can frickin' level up. <laughs> I just want to know. I just want to... I just... I can't rest until I've known that we've leveled up as far as we can go. No, I don't, Duel. A couple of our characters did not get touched during any of that fighting. Well, apparently elves can also, are also capped at level 7. Need 125,000 to get to level 8. He's got almost 200,000 experience. Alright, there you have it.
We'll take a look at the loot as well. But I think we're going to call it a day. Call it a stream. Six hours today. Um, five and a half. So we did it in just under 12 hours. 12 hour game if you know exactly what to do. Um, it's not bad. I mean, if there was ever a game to try and speed run for me on this channel, it would be this one. 12 hours is... About as, about as quickly as I can do it, maybe. Well, if you were going to speed run, we would get the dust of disappearance and then go straight for Tyrant Thraxes. Play Streets of Rage 2 ending credits right now? Yeah, really should. Um... Cool. Just take a look at the loot, and that'll be all. Necklace of Missiles, that we didn't use. Plus five. Wanda Lightning. Wanda Lightning. Fleet Mail. Plus one. Oh, not as good as I thought it was. Can't tell anything about the mace? Fine. Ring of protection plus three. Those are all rings of protection plus three. That's psycho. Not a magical mace. Ring of protection plus three. Plus two. Two. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two. Hell yeah. Potions of healing. Appraising some jewelry. Racers AC3, Ring of Fire Resistance. Oh, Mace plus three. Long Sword plus two, Flame Tongue. Really good. Plus three, plus three, plus three. Not enough money, okay. Raise jewelry, so. Really, so. So many. Rings of protection plus three. I was just worried about making sure everyone got one. <laughs> I don't know if they'll work. Let's see, armor class minus three already. Oh, armor class minus six. Did work. All right. Um, you want 198 platinum? It's all yours, bud. I just want to show you one thing you can do with this game, which is kind of funny. And then we'll call the stream. Gonna link these here. Do you want to train? First, we're gonna save the game, uh, and then we're going to drop character. Drop Ali. Are you sure? Yes. Drop Tyson. I'm sorry. Not drop. Not drop. We want to uh, save it on. Let's see. Not drop. We want to remove character from party. I think is what we want to do. <laughs> We're almost done. I'll start with Pool of Radiance at least. Wanna remove character from party. Remove. 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 Uh add new character to party. Add. 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 Begin adventuring. Oh, wait. That's not what I wanted to do. Wait, how do you do it? Hold on. Train only these here. Do you want to train? Yes. Move, remove, 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 remove. Is it to DOS? Maybe.
I swear I've done this before. I've played this game. I know this game. Here we go. Uh, add character to party. Add, 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 add. Yeah, I'm trying to put my... Sorry, begin adventuring. Hey, it's Rolf. Greetings, courageous ones. I'm Rolf, appointed by the council to introduce newcomers to the fair city of Flan. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to do a... I'm just going to do a fight in the slums just because I think it's going to be funny. <laughs> But yeah, you can play the whole game again. It's Groundhog's Day for your party. Um, let's get to the monster-ridden areas of fun. Where it's ended. Let me urge you to apply to the city clerk, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're surprised by a bugbear leading a party of kobolds. You ever seen a bugbear in the slums? Now you have. Eat that shit. Oh, how did you miss, you stupid idiot? It's a cobalt with an armor class of seven. And you weren't even sweeping. Anyway. Owned. <laughs> Killed that cobalt. He went forward to space. It's almost like he's drunk with power. Ugh. All right, well, let me out. Where's his brother? I mean, if you were gonna send heroes to a city overwhelmed with monsters. They wouldn't be level one. Right? Right? They wouldn't be level one. Well, thank you so much for watching Kelvin's Coin TV. Can you beat Pool of Radiance with nothing but fighters? The answer is a resounding yes. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. See you in the next episode. Bye.